that looks right. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome to uh, welcome to, welcome to a later live stream than usual. But welcome, anyways. Uh, hopefully you're all doing well. And um, so yeah. Oh boy, uh, it's been a bit of a busy week for me, uh, just doing Sage content the entire time. So I just wanted to chill for a night. Or at least for a little bit and play a little bit of Super Mario World, which uh, the Super Nintendo, I believe, was set or Nintendo was celebrating the 30th year uh, since the Super Nintendo release back in 91. So or at least 91 in North America. So I, I wanted to sit down and play it. I didn't really have a lot to say. Uh, Slim Jam, how's it going? How are you doing today? So, yeah, I uh, just wanted to sit down and play it for a while. Just chill. Uh, I don't really have too much planned. Sorry if I if it's. You hear the sounds of me moving my mic. Um, you good? All right, cool, cool. Uh, Haas, thank you so much for following the channel. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you're having a good day. So I don't know exactly how long I'm going to be playing it for, but I'll play it for as long as uh, you know, as long as I'm feeling it. So uh, I still need to do uh, more recordings for Sage after this. So. We'll see how long I'll be doing this for. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, I can't see the frame rate on this. Okay, so I have. <laughs> I actually have a save file of zero and I have a star 86. I'm playing this on my Super Nintendo Classic, by the way. So a Super Nintendo feeling controller is something I actually have the advantage of using. We'll go file A. I don't know if I'll actually be able to go for all of the uh, all of the le all of the goals to get the star 96, but I'll do my best. So if anyone is actually like playing some of the games from Sage like or watching any of the videos, doesn't have to be mine. I uh, got a question. What's your favorite game so far? Because I think Riders is my favorite, but then I was told I had like an earlier build. So I'm like so confused on that. <laughs> and then. Uh, it was really weird because I was like, oh, OK, you know what? Maybe it's not a, like a super fit. I, I moved my fan a little bit. I was like, oh, maybe it's not a super finished version of it. All right, that's cool. And then find out the one that I had was even less finished than what everybody else was playing. So that was kind of weird because I still thought it was pretty solid. Minus the uh, invisible rail. Dang. I thought I could jump high enough to get it. So I actually do have a stream that's coming up. I believe I believe if I've spoken to this person. It'll be on Saturday. Actually, I want that one up. Dang, I was trying to go for the lowest number possible. Big boy boxing and fro gun today. I really like fro gun a lot. It's a solid puzzle platformer. I'll have to check that one out. If I can't play it for the main channel, I'll for, sh for sure play it for the second channel. But I, there are some that I do want to just sit down and play on my own. Uh, as for the person that I contacted, um, talking to Gerlis 64 about the Mario 64 Plus, and so far our plan is that he's going to join me on on a stream on Saturday, and you know, just kind of goof off and talk about silly stuff uh, as. I play Mario 64 plus because that version of the game is just really cool. He's a very, he's very big on Mario 64. So it's only fitting to, uh, that he would join me because he is the Mario 64 aficionado compared. <laughs> like I would like, if he did like a Mario world ROM hack stream, I would love to join him on that. So it, it's kind of like one of those things. Like he's super big on Mario 64. I'm big on uh super Mario world. So yeah, that'll, that'll be fun to do. And uh, I may or may not have challenged him to a race. Don't know all the details yet. Uh, just saying, you know, that is an idea that I threw out there because uh, I had a race originally planned with a friend of mine. Uh, 
Alec, uh, the SQ... Oh, crap, I... SQG Review Show. I'm trying to remember what his, user ch his YouTube channel goes by these days, because he's changed it in the years that I've known him. But, um, we were supposed to do a Super Mario 64 race earlier this year, but he had to... He had to back out from it, um... For personal reasons, so... I was like, alright, that's cool. I mean, it would have that would have probably been one of the more interesting races, just because I've raced him in Mario 3 before, and it's always been a very similar result. So this one would have been completely different. But still. There's no pressure. Though if Twip came in and was like, oh, hey, Mario 64 race, I'd be like, yeah, no, that ain't happening. You sped ran the game and got, like, was it two or three hours or however long you beat it? That dude was doing speedruns of Mario 64 for 120 stars, and it was terrifying. I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. I can't even do half the things he was doing. So. So, yeah. Uh, possible plans. Trademark. No, just kidding. That's actually kind of a joke that I used in, uh, in a video coming up. Uh, I need to start editing it some more, but uh, without defeating a bad Nick actually has all all of the voiceover done. Like everything's done for it. I just have to edit the whole thing together. And there's a little joke I use in there. I might as well give a little bit of a hint. But um, something I did in there, I kept using as like an ongoing joke, and I kept adding trademark to it. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it won't be a funny joke when when it shows up. Who knows? Who knows? I was never... I was never the comedian, so... <laughs> Got a question. Have you tried, um... I know this is probably one of the bigger games that was shown off early uh, for the trailer, but have you sh have you played Rush 3D? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Because, um... I thought it was awesome, even though... I know this is an updated version, uh, right now that I haven't downloaded, that I probably will soon. But, uh, I thought it was awesome. A little scuffed, but, I mean, from, uh, from what one of the developers was saying is that it was a build that was, like, three months in. And for what they got for three months, I, that's, a, that's some talent right there, and not knowing, see, I, I normally don't like the bumper engine, and finding out that that thing was done through the bumper engine impressed the hell out of me. Let's see. Get some one-ups. Some one-ups. Haven't touched it yet. Still check it out sooner or later. I, I would recommend it. It's pretty good. It's probably one of my favorite things to come out of Sage, but I haven't played a lot when it comes to Sage yet. So, um, I'd probably put... Um, for sure I would put Sonic Riders X, though I might want to do some kind of video where I mention that, hey, I didn't actually play, like, the full ver the full Sage demo. I somehow got my hands on a different version of the game. So I might make a video to address that. Uh, maybe at the end of Sage. Or maybe I'll write it as Sage is going on so I can just talk about the games that I played in greater detail. Uh, Sonic Rush 3D, 3D is another. Uh, Emerald Ties. Ties? Tides. T ties. I don't remember exactly what... I don't remember if it's Ties or Tides. I want to say both, because both seem like they would be really good. Anyways, uh, that's another really good one. That's a crush. Oh, wait, I forgot that one's not a crush. And I could realistically go here, but who would want to do that? I could go there. I know a little too much about this game. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually almost ma almost finished a uh, ROM hack of this. It was gonna be like levels that I wanted to make and do some weird stuff with it, but uh, I think these days like super advanced ROM hacks would d would destroy mine and in it would be a lot better than mine. Like mine were super vanilla. But the, mainly the reason was to do it was so that way I can learn how to design a level. I wasn't very good at it and I'm still not. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll goof off with Mario Maker two. And try to make some more levels. But anyways, um, as for like games that I'm currently loving from Sage, uh, Sonic Rush, Sonic Riders, uh, Mario 64 Plus, 
that one was awesome. Or is awesome, I should say. I'm only gonna do this so that way I can snack one of these. And I'll go back. Not without my Yoshi. Um, Luigi and the Quest for Nothing took me by surprise. That was that was ridiculously good. It's also kind of hard. Like, it's such a hard ROM hack. Uh, ROM hack. See, it, it looks like a GBC game, a uh, Game Boy Color game, so I'm calling it a ROM hack. It's such a hard fan game to, at, like, as you get further and further. Actually, let me do this. Oh, this is the wrong one. Shoot. Oh, sorry, Yoshi. I didn't mean to do this one. I was supposed to go to the one all the way back, uh, much further back. Hey, it's Ray the Flying Squirrel from New York City. He's Italian. Shoot. As a kid, I used to never remember how to get through this because I didn't... I didn't know anything about the flying. I'm just like, what's this room? <laughs> what does it do? Why am I here? Um, uh, it was like, these days it's like, oh yeah, you fly here. You try to collect as many uh, coins as you can. I I looked at the thumbnail and almost downloaded it, thinking that I got to go back and download it. Uh, which one? We're going to take the higher exit by keeping our momentum or keeping our speed. There we go. That'll take us to the secret. Oh, the Luigi fan game. Yeah, that game was so cool. <laughs> um, What Dylan didn't get to see, I don't know. I doubt he's in this chat right now because it is pretty late for him. It's like it's after it's probably going to it's close to 11 o'clock for him. But uh, the first boss. But if he is here, be like, dude, you want the, uh, oh, this was the room I was talking about. It's got this little game. So can I get it? Can I get it? Nope. Fine. I give up. Uh, there is a Sonic themed boss fight in the Luigi fan game. I don't know if Dylan knows about that. I was encouraging him to like continue. It's like, yeah, yeah it, it'll be pretty funny. He'll recognize the boss fight instantly. And it's only in that, but like in looks, and I, I thought it was amazing. I was laughing when I when I played it. Uh, and then the other thing was that after that point, that's when the game started getting a lot harder. Uh, so like I was struggling through it just because the um the camera moves a lot just because there's a bit of, there's screen crunch. So if it's anything like Donkey Kong Land or Sonic Blast or anything like that, it's gonna move along with it. So that way you see what's in front of you. I actually don't know if Sonic Blast is like that. That game is garbage and I only, I only played it once and I never want to play it again. But I know I'm going to have to. I don't care about no, no Brazilian copy or whatever it was. Or some copy that was exclusive to one region. I don't like the game. It's like even without it, like the gimmicks in that, the gimmick in that water zone sucks. <laughs> I don't even think I bothered with the emeralds. Like in that game, I don't think I even bothered with it. I was just like, you know what, this thing, I, I, it's not coming to mind, but I do remember like being miserable playing that just because of, uh... hey, Martin, what's up? You ever just wake up at 5 a.m. just because you couldn't sleep at night? Yeah, that was me. How is how am I doing? Uh, that that used to be me on the daily. That used to be me all day, every day. All right, I'm gonna go up here because there's a secret right there. Also, you could do that with uh with shells. You could just spit them into the wall and get them stuck. It's pretty funny. I'm starting to hit you now. <laughs> I know. I used to have a thing where I couldn't sleep until 3 a.m. Now I have a thing where I'm knocking out like pretty fast, but I'm not wake. I'm not like getting a full eight hours. I'm just waking up at six, which is fine. You know, it's better than what I normally get.
But yeah, Martin, I'm doing all right. Just wanted to take a small break from Sage and play a little bit of Super Nintendo. Though technically, I did... I played a lot of uh, Pokemon Shield yesterday and got through the... Um, I finally got through the Isle of Armor DLC. So the G-Max... Um, what's that Pokemon's called? Uh, Urshifu. Uh, which is like the main legendary of that part of the game. I finally got around to playing it. And I got through the whole thing. It was trying so hard was to be Sonic 3 with the graphics and the 3D special zones. I would almost compare it to like Donkey Kong Land on Game Boy, uh, where it tried to be like Donkey Kong Country. Very similar thing. Screen Crunch was its biggest enemy. Uh, the sprites were massive. Um, the only difference is that Donkey Kong Land was at least had some visual appeal. Uh, Sonic Blast, not so much. The sprites are hideous. When you put it into an, when you have, when you restrict it to like 8 bit, that color palette was disgusting. By the way. <laughs> I could probably spit it into here too, but oh well. But yeah, it's a shame the game was that it, the way it was. And surprisingly, like, I think I was watching a video on like just the entire retrospective of the Game Boy of the Game Gear games. Mostly because I was getting an I was trying to get an idea of how people felt about uh Sonic Drift 1 and 2 because I'm doing the uh racing game retrospective after without defeating a badnik is over. And I kind of wanted to get like I, I kind of wanted to get people's uh or other people's like opinion on it just I I was curious about it. And I also didn't want to repeat stuff that they were saying, but uh, not a whole lot of in-depth reviews that I can find. Either that or I just wasn't looking in the right place. So... Damn. So I'll probably try to fix... I'll try to, like, be as in-depth as I can as I want to go because... Uh, I don't know. I, I have I have stuff to say about it. I just don't have a whole lot. Because I think some of the things I could say about the first game, I can kind of copy and paste and talk about the second game. But yeah, um, the thing with uh, the Game Gear is how many games were supported for it, like, or how many uh, Sonic games were actually on that system, which I believe it was, what, six or seven? It was ridiculous. It was like the amount of original games that original games and then games that had like ports so you have like your mean bean machine and your sonic spinball it was ridiculous like i've never seen such support for a handheld just for like a first party property but then again all of those were done by like companies outside of sega i think I forgot the name of the company that worked on uh sonic one and two and I want to say ancient, but that's probably nothing close to it. I want to assume it's like the developers of like the Mega Man games on Game Boy, but I doubt it. It could be Sega for all I know. Because I don't research the GBA, the Game Gear games as much as I should. <laughs> Uh, so, like, the reason I was playing uh, Pokemon Shield a lot, um, which was something I mentioned, like, a moment ago, was because I was doing the, what is it called, the Summer Ghost event for, uh, for Sword and Shield. Basically, what they do is that the max raid dens that they have, or the raid dens, whatever they call them, the dens that they have so you can do your, like, raids, um, their max raids were altered so that way you have a higher chance of getting specific Pokemon. Or if you got specific Pokemon, they might have a certain property to them. Uh, with Gengar, you could get a G-Max Gengar, which is like um, a heavily altered version of Gengar that... Uh... Can I go over this? That's not the one. But uh, basically, is that it gets a it gets a different form when it uh, turns giant. 
and from there uh it's just it's just an altered form pretty much in a way it's kind of cool so that's why i got it um there was also a shiny chandelure which is basically like a chandelier pokemon that instead of uh where the lights are replaced with candles because its previous evolution was called litwick which is uh, a pokemon that's a candle it looks really cool it has this purple flame it looks really sick and everything but when you get the shiny form the flame turns like what normal fire would look like orange just red to like white in the middle and <laughs> i spent basically my entire weekend as i was working on sage content i was also doing those raids and <laughs> i got two of them but it, it took a long time to get them because i was going through a bunch of raids and even then there's like no guarantee of catching them unless those were your raids specifically uh, the game's very unusual about how, what the catch rate of raids are, or of like shiny Pokemon in a raid. Actually, wait, no, I think that's a Pokemon Go thing, not a Pokemon Sword and Shield thing, where um, your catch rate is like 100% if it's a shiny. I think that's just, uh, oh, see, that's how you go up there. I think that's just a let's go thing. But for uh, Sword and Shield, um, there might be some kind of percentage to it. I think my goal for this whole thing is just go through the entire game. So for some of these, you might see me go right back into a level because some levels such as... Uh, any level that has like a red... A red dot or a um or if it's like a ghost house like this one is is gonna have two exits and to complete the game you have to go through every single exit in the game so uh so that's what i'm gonna do or i'm gonna try and get to it i don't know if i'll have the time to do it but i could try gotta get them 96 exits exactly we'll fight the big boo Actually, wait, no, I'm already at this exit. Might as well. Oh, no, can't go in it. <laughs> Just hop through the bottom. I actually had a way of uh, hitting the very top of it, which would give me 50 points and I believe a three up. And I used to be consistent with it. I, I can't get it anymore. <laughs> So to anybody anybody watching the chat, hopefully you're all having a good one. You know, hopefully it's like a good day or nighttime, whatever time of the day, whatever time it is for you. I know we have people who are not in the U.S., so it's different time, different time zones. I mean, time zones are all right. It's just when you want to collaborate with people, it becomes a pain. Especially when you if your time zone like. If it's night in your time zone earlier, then it's especially a pain. That was a mistake. Nobody saw that. <laughs> there are no mistakes. Making some pizza because you're hungry. All right, cool. Yeah, get that pizza. There's nothing wrong with a little morning pizza, unless you do it every day. If you do it every day, then yeah, okay, there is a problem there. You can still die here. Like, if you just pick up the blocks right away, you could, like, fall in and still die. There's a couple of levels that you could still die in, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Saw what? Saw nothing. <laughs> I think where I'll actually struggle is when it gets tubular. That shouldn't take too long. Mm -hmm. Dang it. Okay. Got it. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, I used to be able to get this. I think my oldest brother was like ridiculously good at this game. 
then I got better. <laughs> like, he was the one where it's like, oh, you know, we're at Soda Lake and none of us can get through it. Tubular Mondo, I would say, are the hardest ones. Yeah, um, Outrageous is another hard one because you, you can't necessarily go over anything. So you have to, like, stick with, like, all the bullet bill projectiles and also the, uh, the, fi the little flames that are on the ground. So you have to deal with those the whole time. And it's just a lot coming at you at once. I'm not going to fly over. It's funny how much like of Super Mario World I've played, but I have chosen to play Sonic for for my time on the internet. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just kind of funny. It's like I have this no this wealth of not well, not really a wealth of knowledge. I'm sure there's a lot more people who are no more knowledgeable. This is actually a spot where you, if you don't have Yoshi, um. You can use the feather, you can use the cape and like slowly hop on them. Damn. 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 Yeah, well, I got a two up from it. Suck it, game. Um. I thought that had three. Oh well. Do I get one? No, I don't. Anyways, uh, like. I'm sure there's a lot of people who know more about Mario than I do, but it's like I've played a lot of, like, Nintendo games and stuff, yet playing a Sega intellectual property is something that I'm known for more. <laughs> it's kind of... It's funny, like, where things take you. Then again, that could be debatable. I'm probably most known for, like, doing the challenge thing. That's fine. At first, I resented it, actually. Like, without defeating a Bannock, I felt like I was stuck having to do... Well, actually, no. Mods, I felt like I was stuck doing, which I kind of did felt like it for a while. Uh, without defeating a bad Nick, it was a weird spot for me. Like, when I was playing, when I was doing that those videos. But, I'm just like, okay, I can do these better now. Because I've had videos on, like, reception-wise, like, on two different ends. One of them is, uh... Uh, like, the Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 stuff, which se seemed like people liked it. Then you have stuff like Sonic 3, which didn't wasn't as well received. Oh, there's actually a moon if you fly all the way up. Uh, I probably should have shown that. There's a moon that'll give you three uh, a 3-up. Three there's gonna be a couple of those spots. I might actually hit up one of them when I get into a Vanilla Dome. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Sonic 3 wasn't as well received as I would have assumed. Well, actually, no. It was... But there was one comment that really stuck out to me. And it's not like, you know, oh, this was a hater. No, it was a comment that was uh, actually well, like, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what? I want to be annoyed by this, but they're actually kind of right. <laughs> where it was like, oh, it was like overly explaining things and being so repetitive. It was like, damn, you're right. Hey, I didn't get crushed. Let's go. <laughs> so with uh, a second, ch uh, with a second stab at Sonic Three and Knuckles, hopefully you know I don't come across the same problems I did in the last, in the original video where it just seemed like I was just droning on about the same thing. Which is fine. I think that's the best part about the fact that I can do a second run with a with a completely different route is that I can make that second ver video better. Have any of you heard, uh, there is a, somebody actually played, um, this theme on a church organ, and it is the, it is legitimately terrifying and awesome at the same time. Like, I loved it. Oh, no! Ugh. Okay, well, I wasn't hoping to do that. Uh, that was me trying to get to it way too fast. <laughs> but I think, uh, okay. 
This time. Oh God, that was weird. I should have just landed. Uh, this time I'll actually grip. Actually, I don't need it. If I can make it all the way to the top, I won't need this. But yeah. Um. Hopefully I can release without defeating a bad neck uh, in the coming days. Actually, once stage is over, uh, give it about a day or two, and then I'll try to make uh, without defeating a bad neck public. But channel members get it first. Almost got the sticky cape thing accidentally. The sticky cape? Okay, I feel like I I feel like there's something some info there that I'm not aware of. Feel free to explain that one. Oh, a Kaizo strat. Okay, yeah. I'm not as familiar with Kaizo strats. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of Kaizo content. Because it's it's one of those things where I'm going to be curious about it, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to be miserable because I'm terrible with Kaizo games. <laughs> Took down Morton. If you're flying with a cape and you do this precise, stick to the ceiling and as you move forward. Oh! I feel like I've seen that before. That's pretty neat. Okay. Save on this. This one's going to have two things I can do here. First, I'm going to get to this. Uh, I'm going to eat these up. This is why I'm glad there's a blue shell here. I know it's itchy. Because I'm going to fly all the way up here. He was never able to demonstrate it. Oh. Dang. <laughs> And then I'm going to, hopefully I don't die doing this, demonstrate something kind of funny about Super Mario World. Hey, I actually need Yoshi with me, okay, game? Cut it out. So, what you do... It's probably a little bit faster than actually... Uh, Probably faster than going through this entire room because you're not like you're not going uh, trying to run through that lava area or whatever. So this is what you do. You have just enough time to go through that. Um, I learned about this because there was a uh, I was messing around with Lunar Magic, which is the ROM hack or the level editing tool that you use for uh, Super Mario World. It's a very old, archaic one, but it's People still use it. And there's one about a pixel. It's probably one pixel of uh, blank space underneath that. So you can just easily go right underneath it. Um, that's just a pixel that, that doesn't exist in the game. Um, like how um, there's a wall that's supposed to go, that's supposed to keep you, or that if you hit it, and you're just going to fall all the way down rather than falling through it. Um, there's about a, a square, I think one square of it that isn't there. So you can easily do stuff like that. 
I think I learned that about 10 years, no, I learned that about like seven years ago because uh, I was looking for any kind of content to make on my really old channel uh, because I was trying to get into the partner program and I was doing videos on glitches and those were all the, those were doing ridiculously well, um, which is kind of funny to say now because at that time I needed 2,500 views just to get into the partner program. It didn't matter how big or small my channel was because I was trying to get through an MCN. And I'm just like, uh, I had to, sorry, Yoshi. You can survive underwater, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so <laughs> that was my whole thing. Uh, it was like, okay, I, I gotta find out some kind of content that people will watch and glitch videos were it. Um, and none of those videos were any good. <laughs> they were awful. But it did prove that people would watch those kind of videos. Uh, it proved it to me, actually. Damn it. Because originally I'm like, no one's going to watch this crap. <laughs> he needs to learn to cry in an incredibly obnoxious way. It'll be his revenge on Mario. I mean, Yoshi's Island is his thing. Uh, but yeah, the YouTube network I wanted to partner with, uh, they were... Like, it was one of those things where you hear good things about them, and then you kind of go into it, and then after a while, it's like, oh, this isn't as great as it used to be, as it seemed. Uh, which is usually a, ma a mistake that, a mistake that newer partner, or newer YouTuber, at the time, newer YouTubers made. This was like 2013. But it's like a mistake that, like, smaller creators would make. It's like, oh, I'm part of a YouTube network, so I'll have, like, all of these kind of perks or whatever. And you don't get the perks, you kind of have to fend for yourself. Hey, Throne Terror, how's it going? And thank you so much for following the channel. Sorry I missed it a couple minutes ago, but hopefully you're having a good day. And if not, hopefully the stream can be a little bit of an escape. But yeah, um, which is funny because like now YouTube's uh, partnership thing is like you have to have a crap ton of watched hours, uh, a thousand, uh, 1,000 subs. You have to have nothing wrong with your copyright, like no copyright strikes basically. So even if you have claims, you're good. Uh, when I got my, ch when I got Knuckles channel partnered, that was, it was like, you need a thou, I think you just needed 10,000 views and maybe a thousand subs. It was a lot easier before people figured out how you can trick the system and get into it. I tricked the system as well, but, uh, then again, it was like, it's not like I didn't deliver on the content that would be viewed by people. I mean, shortly after my most viewed video of all time was made. So, <laughs> YouTube is weird. So, uh, Throned, I have a, I have a question. Uh, how, how'd you find the stream? Is it through Twitter? Was it through just browsing Discord server? Probably one of the Discord servers I advertised it to. <laughs> I only really advertised the two servers. <laughs> And it's like servers of people who are much better streamers than I am. <laughs> I guarantee I'm not that great of a streamer. We have a Discord link. <laughs> yes, we do have a Discord server. The link is in the info section, I think. Oh, you were just browsing Discover? All right, cool, cool. Well, welcome to the stream. I'm Frank. I run a YouTube channel called Knuckles Channel 3 and Knuckles, which is a Sonic themed YouTube channel. And on Twitch, I just do variety streaming. I play some of the games that I grew up playing and I play stuff for the first time. So uh, glad to have you uh, with us. Susan Walensky. <laughs> I at one point called her, I think I called her Susan Windows Update or something. Uh, there was an edit that I did in one of the videos I did where um, it's like saying the beginning of her name and it just, then I made it look like it stuttered and, you know, getting the blue screen. <laughs> I mean, I know how to say her last name. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's funny to make edits. Hopefully it doesn't come off as cruel. Subbed on YouTube, but I didn't know you had a Twitch channel. I, I've had one for a while. It's just, um... I'm trying not to advertise it as much as I used to because I got I got a community warning for it. Because YouTube's like, nah, nah, bro, you gotta you gotta stay here. I'm like, I don't wanna. 
so I got a community warning for that. So I've been try I've been doing my best to be like careful of it. So it's like if I have to advertise it, I might have to do it through videos. I can't do it just like a solo video on its own where it's like, hey, I'm streaming now because that's what got me in trouble to begin with. Uh, it, it was like a whole YouTube policy thing, which is kind of stupid. Sorry, YouTube, but I don't like using your site for streaming. Bubbles of poisonous gas. I always think of them like the little uh, the things that Bowser drops at the final boss. I was like, these are just giant marbles. Or bowling balls. Hey, Willzinger, how's it going? How you doing today? Oh, wait. <laughs> You've been chatting in a while, and I just barely noticed it. Uh, okay. It's one of those streams today. <laughs> My awareness isn't there today. <laughs> oh, I don't have a Yoshi. I think in the GBA version, you can actually eat these guys. They're called Blargs. Hey! <laughs> uh, it's one of those streams where my awareness is just really low. Very low perception. <laughs> Hated those bubbles as a kid. I barely passed it. Oh, man. There's a lot of things in, these in this game alone that gave me so much grief. Uh... Like, any of the ice levels, I just absolutely hated them. Uh, is it up here? Hey, it's right here. So if you fly up here, three up. I <laughs> tend to sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a thing that happens. Blargs are related to Paper Mario Dragon. Also the Zar Dragon. Wait, the Zar Dragon from, like, Mario RPG? Man, that's some awesome lore. Plus, Mario RPG is probably one of my favorite Mar uh, one of my favorite Mario games. Probably one of my favorite RPGs, next to Pokemon Crystal. Uh, Martin, <laughs> let me do this. <laughs> Martin, thank you so much for the 100 bits. It is greatly appreciated. Oh, areas like these always gave me grief because I just I couldn't get I couldn't wrap my head around the idea of like ice physics in video games because this was one of a few games that I played that actually had them. So this always threw me off. But it's not that difficult. Damn, I was not supposed to do that. Can I? Actually, it's not here. That was in another section where you could just go up. I made a mistake. <laughs> I was supposed to grab the. Sh I was supposed to uh, do a normal jump on the shell and then kick it up. But um, I done goofed. Believe this, I can. Yeah, I can just float all the way down. Love how Mario just dive bombs into the floor, acts like a pow block. <laughs> it's so cool. I wish there were. I wish there were more uh, areas for me to use it. Oh yeah, there we go. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. Okay, maybe not. That's a secret a secret way to the end. I always hated that me and my friend could have played at the same time, but now with the power of ROM hacking, it's real. Uh, I will say something about that, and Dylan and I noticed this, or Garlo64 and I noticed this. Um, any, any of the levels that have, like, really tall vertical sections or that do any kind of vertical scrolling will crash the game. Uh, when we did our playthrough of, uh, what was it? Uh, we did our playthrough of the, of the co-op ROM hack about almost two years ago. That's when we found out, because we were having issues trying to get it to work. And it was like, oh, every vertical scrolling level is going to, um, mess up on you. So, uh, I would recommend doing, I would recommend modifying the ROM so that way, um, you don't have to play those levels. You do miss out on part of the game, but it's either that or the game just doesn't work at all. And when you get into those areas, the entire game crashes, which is a shame. It's either the game crashes or the emulator crashes. I don't remember. If I remember that, if I remember that question, I'll be sure to ask Dylan. Uh, 
And for anybody in here who doesn't know that, um, I mentioned it earlier, but might be doing a Mario 64 Plus stream at the end of the week, and I'll be bringing them along. My car crashes. <laughs> My games crash when something weird happens. It's never explained. I also love the background on here where it's like the... Where it's like really dark, but it's like a dark green rather than being all black. I think it's really cool. And then you see like the silhouette of the background. <laughs> Those levels sucked anyways, and it's not like you're missing out on the story. <laughs> okay, then. I'll get... I'll give you that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually go on this side. With Yoshi, I c this would all be still manageable. But uh, with Mario alone, it is not an issue. Damn. Okay. going to kick that up. Just because I don't want that Koopa to mess with me. So what you can do, you can kick that up. There you go. You can carry it with you. You can do it again. Perfect. What the? Oh! It's so high up that it doesn't, like, it won't spawn as a proper thing to bounce on. That's pretty funny. Everybody knows this. Eh, I mean, you're probably right about that. <laughs> I was just saying it. The pea springs. I was just saying it because, you know, it was a thing I had to learn early on when I was uh, getting into ROM hacks. So if you go into a vertical level and die enough times, a secret dialogue of Mario telling you that your bad will appear. <laughs> Just get good. It's that easy. Stop dying. <laughs> you just have Mario with like a gaming headset on. You're actually trash. You're trash. <laughs> If you hang on Star Road for long enough, Gino will appear. <laughs> it's better than new games giving you a baby power-up. Yeah, but the best thing about it is that you really don't need to use it. So you can always just... If you... Like, I, I know uh, there was a Cinemassacre video of uh, Mike Matei, like, ranting about it. And here's the best part about it. You don't need to use it. If it's optional, that's not a problem. Uh, Which is probably the one time where I'll be more than okay with it is if there's no... Uh, oh, these are also Vanilla Secret. So I'll do these. Yeah, it still hurts the pride, but um, it is what it is. Like, for me, it's kind of a self-imposed thing where I never use them. Because pride and some stupid crap like that. Also because I, like, grew up on retro games, so... Some of them, like the outlet, the ridiculous difficulty is something I kind of had to get, I had to adjust to. And no, Ninja Gaiden is not one of them. Uh, for anyone who didn't know, I beat Ninja Gaiden on stream the other, like, over a week ago or something, almost two weeks ago. And I'm still proud of that. I didn't think I was going to beat the final boss so easily. <laughs> it was still stressful. Because it's like one screw up could just lead into a chain of screw ups and. Then I gotta go all the way back to 6 1, and that's not fun. So, that's why I was just so, like, un. I was so. Uh, it was just so nerve wracking to play it. That was the only one I was getting out of that, anyways, so. But yeah, um, like, I know that's a thing that future Mario games, especially 3D games, uh, that include a lives, 
system in some way will continue to include. All right, let me hydrate. Although the worst baby power up would be the power up in 3D world. It takes you straight to the end. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. But I think I know what you're talking about. Donkey Kong Country Returns has the same thing, but the difference is that I actually preferred it in Donkey Kong Country uh, Returns because the barrel levels were my least favorite. Oh, God. Yeah, you can't eat these boys until uh, the GBA games. Uh, in Country Returns, if you die a certain amount of times at a specific checkpoint, the game, I think, either takes you to the end or it takes you to the next checkpoint, which I... DKC1 had shortcuts that skipped some levels. Yeah, but you actually need, you needed to be skilled to figure out where those were. It wasn't like a thing where... Uh, uh, where like in DKC3, where you actually had warps that were hidden, that you can use those to get to the very end of the level. It's nothing like that. Uh, you, had, you had to figure out where the warps are, where the secrets are that would take you to the end. Because some of them you had to make like a blind jump. And if you get it wrong, you just leaped into a pit. So sometimes it was a leap of faith kind of thing. Okay, then <laughs> I'm glad I got the okay on that one. Also, because I didn't like Returns very much, uh, I enjoyed some of the levels, but when I got to the barrel stuff, I hated them. And at the time, I was gonna... Uh, I ran a different channel, so at the time, I was going to... Uh, <laughs> I was going to make a review on it. I'm just like, I'm not doing this review, because I hate this game so much. <laughs> I, I, I've played... Uh, what's it called? Tropical Freeze? I, I like that a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> the Dark Souls of typing games. Yeah, you thought uh, you thought typing of the dead was something. Nah, you play yourself some Mario te teaches typing. Some next level stuff. I thought uh, texting of the bread was tough. Ah, uh, not until you uh, not until you have Charles Martinet teach you how to type. I think he was the voice of it, right? Could be wrong. <laughs> Wet bones. <laughs> That's true. They're supposed to be dry bones. What a rip. That's a real boner of a move. It's the sin of, of greed consumes all. It, you know what sucks about uh, New Super Mario Brothers 2? It gets so much flack, but it's honestly a very solid game. Like, I played it on uh, 3DS and it was actually really good. <laughs> Like the levels got re the levels got like gradually more and more difficult, and I was having a good time with it. Oh, this is the auto scroller one. Okay, so we can kind of just chill at our own pace. <laughs> Wet bones. Okay, so I got a couple of uh, hard hitting questions. Uh, first off, is ro is water is water wet? Hey, Codename Gamma, how are you doing today? How's your day treating you? We're just, uh, chilling with some Super Mario. It's not the Sonic, so I know. Uh, we got some, we got a good amount of people here. Just chilling. Talking about the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Actually, no, I'm just messing with that last bit. <laughs> Butterbridge, time to oil up. I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Please stop. <laughs> hate that. <laughs> Anybody watch Game Chasers? There's a clip that they keep using from the gaming historian where he keeps saying like oil up and it's like oil up and hit the gym with me. <laughs> and they used to play that a lot. I haven't seen their videos in a long time, but it's a really funny series. It's really cool though. It's like uh, these hardcore game collectors. I just love doing it. Yeah, the whole collecting coin thing. Yeah, I didn't like it very much, but the actual levels, uh, the actual levels were really well put together. Like, 
I know it's the one that gets, to, uh, it's the most, like, it's the safest one to do because, um, it's the safest, it's the safest one to do because it's already been done on the Wii, plus they leaned a little bit on that Mario 3 nostalgia by adding the raccoon tail, but still, I think it's pretty decent. Playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles while you're playing Super Mario World. Hey, playing one... <laughs> You're playing one goaded game, I'm playing another. So it's good stuff. Uh, could be better always, but water isn't wet. Wetness comes from the water molecules touching your skin, so that wet as a descriptor from that action, but not as a descriptor from the actual water itself. There we go. Uh, if hot dogs are sandwiches. Hot dogs are sandwiches on their side. And cereal is a soup. A TikTok action. <laughs> I saw a TikTok video on that whole thing, and I'm just like... I don't know what existence is anymore, and I was ready to fade away. Not really. It's like... <laughs> it's like you watch it, it's like a... It's like you're, you see the light, it's like a new form of enlightenment that you have. Do that, because all of this is annoying. It's got some Super Nintendo slowdown. Oh god, no, Yoshi, 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 oh... I think there's another one over here somewhere. There it is. Yoshi went nowhere. Let's go. There's a lot of sub areas that not a lot of people see. If Mario was a bullet hell, quick, I'm putting it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, you could not be serious. Sorry, Yoshi. Yoshi was your bro when you left him behind. I didn't mean to leave him behind. Those stupid Koopas took him out. We're gonna take care of him. Fade into the abyss known as TikTok. <laughs> TikTok knowledge. Hey, what? What? TikTok is good for one thing. It allowed me to get uh, some of the events from Gen Five that I never got before. Because <laughs> I started booting up my uh, Pokemon White again, and I was like, oh, I do this with the DNS settings, and I get instant access to all the events. It's really cool. Find the nearest egg. Good as new. It's like he never died. I actually think it's here, right? Good as new. <laughs> Yoshi is a god. He can't die. Oh, yeah, it's true. You know what they say, cleanliness is next to godliness, and the next to that is Yoshi. And Tails. Instant transmissions to a nearby egg. No, he's like a Digimon. Digimon can't die, they just become eggs. See, I know something from Digimon. I saw the movie. I saw the Angela Anaconda, or whatever her name was, uh, skit, or... That's not a skit. Skits are funny. I saw that little bit at the beginning of the movie. I think I rented it on VHS or DVD or something. Oh no, not her. <laughs> I hated that. that. That was some legit nightmare fuel. And as somebody who didn't watch a lot of Digimon or anything from like Fox uh, early in the morning, I had no idea what I was looking at. <laughs> oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. That's death. Hey, Maxi. Let's see. Uh, pass by. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Twitch won't let me stay for too long, but I hope the stream goes well. All right. Thanks for coming by, man. Hope you have a good one. Did you know that they reused that segment for an actual episode, but removed the Digimon references, but she still looks like Ty for no reason? <laughs> uh, uh. What a weird time. Like, I want to know what the thought process of using her in, like, all the all of Fox's, like, branding and stuff. Or promotions. I want to know what the whole thought process behind it was. Oh, we have our own character. By the way, it becomes a kaiju fight between her and her teacher in that little opening thing for, uh, for Digimon. 
When it's done in the movie, it's awesome. When it's done through Angela Anaconda, it is terrifying. Everybody looks like... Like, I'm pretty sure, uh, like, gray-colored skin is some kind of health defect, or not defect, but, you know, some kind of health issue, but whatever. Senses all look yellow, but you don't say, well, they're all suffering from scurvy. Because boomers like that old-school-looking stuff. I mean, I'm good for a good kaiju fight, but uh, not Angela Anaconda. That's nightmare fuel. Oh, I actually like this one. No! Dang it. I I over... There we go. I like how... <laughs> they're just all goof... That he's just all goofing off and he's got his clones. You don't want none of that. I hate that. I hate that sentence so much. I hate that. I, I can't believe I almost read that on stream. Uh, <laughs> don't have a cow, man. <laughs> yeah. Old school Simpsons, there's like a lot of stuff from that that I love watching. Wait, wouldn't that mean Mario would be the son of Yoshi? There's some very bizarre implications there. Also, it was dis also that would be proven to be false in Yoshi's Island because that's Mario's backstory. Then again, it might not be the same Yoshi. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> this is terrifying. Game Apologist wants to rematch Digimon. We should do a di uh, watch party or something. Podcast our thoughts that would be interesting if you're down. Uh, like the show or the movie because I never really grew up with it, so I'd be the uh, like I've seen a few episodes uh because my brothers were more into it, but it'd be one of those things where I would be I'd be the odd one out just because like I have no experience with the show whatsoever. Oh, I remember this level now. Okay, so. Sorry, we gotta say goodbye to Yoshi one more time. But before we do... Hey Yoshi, what's wrong? Why so blue? Alright. <laughs> the show... and the movies. Oh god, that will be interesting. <laughs> like, the only thing I know about... Like, the most I know about Digimon is, like, the card game because I actually have, like, a structure deck and I have a... I have a lot of cards for, like, the specific type that I'm going for, for my deck. Because my friends have been getting me back in... Have been getting me into, like, other card games. Like, our main one was Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, we tried a little bit with Pokemon, but then we just eventually just started collecting them rather than playing it. And then Digimon slowly getting back into it. Uh, we tried playing it once, but then the pandemic happened, so we couldn't meet in person to play it again. Uh, for a while, and now we're kind of, as, uh, you know, people have been getting the jabs, the jab in the arm, uh, slowly been able to get back into it. Can I go over? Damn it! Not what I wanted to do. Blue Yoshi, best Yoshi. Yeah, Blue Yoshi is the best one. It's my favorite. Then again, you could break, like, every level with it. That was not what I meant to do. So we actually do have to say goodbye to Yoshi. It's okay, man. You're good. Only card game you're into is Magic. I tried getting into that when I first started going to college. Um... I had a green and black infect uh, deck for a while, and I couldn't find it anymore. I think I lost it at some point. I have like a bunch of magic cards, but I I just don't play it. Only because I couldn't get I just couldn't get back into it. Uh, not a lot of people I knew played it, so it was just like one of those. Well, 
So much for that game. Okay, so here's what we gotta do. Drop down here. And we have to do that, unfortunately. It sucks, but we'll use one of our three lives to get him. Am I going for 100%? Uh, I could try. Dylan, how's it going? How you doing, man? Oh, shoot. Oh, that was my wrist. <laughs> Magic, that devil worship game. I, I forgot. <laughs> they tricked me. They said they said it was like Pokemon. I mean, uh, uh Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, uh, oh, wow, there really isn't a... I'm pretty sure, like, every single one of those games has had some kind of accusation of, like, being evil or of the devil or something like that. It's always been weird. It's the other Sonic man. <laughs> I know Pokemon was one of them for sure. I had a friend who, unfortunately, was not able to experience or enjoy Pokemon a lot uh, when he was younger for that reason. That didn't stop me from, uh, unfortunately, damaging the... Uh, the label of my Pokemon Yellow because we had a trade. It was either that or he didn't get to play it, so uh, clearly I it was not a move I'm for these days, but it's something I, I'm okay with. I might as well just... I can usually do this without taking damage, but that's going to take way too long to wait for. I'm a little impatient. It wasn't Witchcraft, it was Evolution, Cannon... Oh, what the heck? Okay, I didn't, wasn't paying attention. Oops. There was like a bunch of things that were thrown, that was like, oh, Pokemon is evil for this reason. And as somebody who grew up in the household that said that's, that's ridiculous, I didn't get it. It's like, no, that's crazy. It's just a game or because we had the games first before the show came out. It's like, it's a game. And then after it was like, no, it's just a TV show. A well-made sacrifice. Exactly. Unfortunately, the game that I got in return was Donkey Kong Land, so I think uh, I got the short end of the stick on that one. Well, here's the thing, Throne. Uh, it, it meant nothing until Gen 4, and then they actually had their own. <laughs> Nintendo was looking on the internet, and it's like, wait, they have these things called Poke Gods? Let's make one of our own. We'll call it Arceus, and we'll give them a movie. This has power up. Sweet. Probably gonna lurk. All right, cool. That's cool. Actually, I wonder what did come first. Was it the fake? The, the like the fan made Poke Gods or like Arceus itself. I didn't use the internet uh much before like 2007 or whenever Arceus was actually confirmed. Uh, but I did <laughs> I did know enough that people did make like they kept trying to make Muse three a thing and it's like that's not a thing. Stop it. And then <laughs> for Pokemon tournament, there's like this ridiculous version of Mewtwo where it's like Super Mewtwo whatever tur HD Turbo or whatever and it's like you were all crazy. Don't remember Pika Blue? W weren't those teased in like magazines or something? I, I never had like gaming magazines up until like mid-2000s. I didn't use the internet for a long time and by the time I found out about like Pika Blue and stuff like that. Um, those have already been out for years. Should sell my Pokemon games before the prices crash again. They might already with like G either GBA games or I know the DS games like might be a hard sell just because um, there are so many reproduction DS games out there now and it sucks because I wanted a copy of Platinum. But I don't want to come across a reproduction. 
like I'm okay with reproducing these games, but uh, at the same time, it's like if you're gonna, if somebody's gonna say it's real, but it actually it's a repro, that's when I take issue. Also, it's same thing for GBA games, unless it's like a game that is not heavily reproduced or counterfeited, Pokemon or Metroid Zero Mission. Then uh, I'll try to go for them. Like, I still need to get uh, Sonic Advance 2 and 3, as much as I don't know if I really want those. But for the sake of videos, you know, I still want to get myself copies of those. But um, when it comes to the. When it comes to like Pokemon games, I'm so hesitant to buy anything. Because unless it's new, I'm not going to know if it's like, oh, hey, it's a. Uh, it's a fake Pokemon Sapphire, which I actually, which I bought and probably should have never bought it because the people that were selling it to me, they're like, yeah, yeah I know it's, it's real. It works or whatever. Then again, that copy of Sapphire was my second choice. My first one was a Japanese Castlevania game that they didn't want to sell. It's like, oh, that's not for sale. It's like, uh, why bring it? It was at a swap meet. It was like, why bring it then? Because <laughs> that would be amazing. Same because people saw Meryl in the early releases and let's see. Uh, it was because people saw Meryl in the early releases of Gold and Silver since there wasn't any translation. And it looked like Pikachu. They call it Pika Blue. Right. I remember that. I used to look up all this stuff uh, on Bulbapedia, which is probably not a great source, but they tend to have their facts straight. You got to do research into bootlegs. Make sure you don't get screwed when buying. Well, I wish... I, I wish uh, I could go around with my with, with the little screwdriver that you have. It's like, I wish I could go around with that to see if it's real. That probably would have been a very good sign. Or just go around with my Game Boy Advance. <laughs> nah, but then somebody would be like, oh, you stole our Game Boy. It's like, shut up. <laughs> I'm just hit him with my controller. I'm holding my controller, so I'm just like, hit him with something. <laughs> but yeah, um... Which I actually ended up buying those kind of screwdrivers because I started buying like Super Famicom games on eBay. Uh, uh, because I the, I don't think the Super Nintendo Classic was out yet, and I was and I had a Retron, so I bought Mario RPG in Japanese, so I could play a translation of it. I could also play ROM hacks of it on my Retron, so I could play it on my TV. It's a lot of steps to do something that I could easily do through an emulator, but um, I'm that person who likes owning physical games. Also, uh, the English version is super expensive. So I was okay with, you know, this very convoluted method. Don't really need a screwdriver, but real games have embossed numbers on the label. If those are there, then it's probably legit. The kind of paper for the labels around the corners. Pikachu is weird at the same time. Seeing a Pikachu turn into someone's dad is also weird. Wait, what? Oh, wait, are we talking about <laughs> Detective Pikachu? That was a weird movie. Oh. I mean, I got three, but still, that was cool. A few of the Gen 2 Pokemon were introduced early into the films. Well, uh, Ho-Oh was introduced so early in the in the series, like episode one. So yeah, they were introduced pretty early, which is kind of cool. And then him saying like, oh, uh, pointing to Moltres, like, no, I don't think you saw Moltres. Try again, kid. I'm like, okay. It's like, I know. I take damage? Oh, I missed it completely. Even if I kicked off Yoshi at that point, I don't think I would make that jump. <laughs> Inflated Mario. Sorry, that's a joke from... That's a, uh, a, a very inside joke between myself and a couple of people.
Uh, yeah, sure. I, I wouldn't mind have some, having somebody in the in the chat for a VC. Just give me a moment to uh, get it all set up. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Hello. Hi, Frank, and hi, chat. Oh, I screwed up my bit. I was going to do a bit about, like, me delivering pizza to Icy Wiener. <laughs> Icy Wiener? Oh, crud. <laughs> and then be like, yeah, it's like a large pepperoni pizza with no crust, no cheese, no... <laughs> no... <laughs> And then, like, 12 copies of Shrek with cheese. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ash and Pikachu are canonically dead. Isn't that, like, a conspiracy theory? There's, like, a bunch of them that I used to... Uh, I used to read into those a lot. There's, like, so many different theories on Pokemon. It's, like, uh, from either the games where some evolutions seemed uh, like they were off... Or, like, the names of Pokemon, like, Psyduck should have been Golduck, and Golduck should have been Psyduck. I think they even did that in the Pokerap, they messed them up. Like, one of them up, or two of them up. Hmm. And then there was a very, uh, disturbing one about, uh, the Unova region for Generation 5. Where the area that was supposed to be a desert land, um, some people thought it was, like, a very... Subtle reference to like the uh to the nine eleven attacks. And oh, yeah. the developers were like, no, we actually just wanted like a desert area. We didn't even piece that together. Yeah, because there's that like whole running theory about how it's like a war torn country or something, and all the guys died. Oh, there was also another one where it's like uh why there are only so many Pokemon in first gen, but then as you go like further and further in generations, there's more and more. It's like there was like a war that killed off a lot of Pokemon or made some of them extinct. Especially like now when they like ran out of ideas and they're like, oh shit, let's just like recolor these. <laughs> Here's Ponyta, but it's a psychic and fairy type, which actually. <laughs> I don't mind that because that's actually a very good type combination. Here's Growlithe, but it has three boobs. <laughs> Here's Growlithe, but we also were kind of watching Total Recall. Then, <laughs> like if it was if it was like in a crowd, the original, or the remake. <laughs> a giant chandelier fell on them. That's a new Pokemon. Well, they had, like, the ice cream cones, the chandelier. I think that they're just, like, looking at things in their office at this point. <laughs> I just think of the... There's an AVGN clip where he's just like, oh, got to design all these games, but I got to come up with new enemies. He looks at a paper clip, like, oh, that'd be perfect. <laughs> all right, next game. <laughs> Although Digimon isn't as... I don't know. It's about the same, I guess. I have some... I have, like, some of the newer cards, and I saw them, like, they're not even trying. <laughs> It's well, like hilarious. Like toy Agumon and then Black Agumon. And yeah. Then like 20 different variants of Agumon. <laughs> it's like they have variants on like the existing ones and then they have like other ones where it's like, uh, what even is this? I, I wish I had some of them, but they were my friend's cards. Well, there's because... all the X antibody ones that just have X at the end. But like, that's a whole story thing. What if there's a Sandcastle Pokemon? Freaking genius. <laughs> I don't know. What weirded me out is that there's a bunch of humanoid Digimon. Oh. And then, of course, like, they're on the V-Pet, so then you raise them and, like, oh, I have to clean up its poop. Surprise, they just made you parents. 
I, I thought. Do you think if it's humanoid, it would like it could deal with that itself? Like, <laughs> you know, it, it cooks its own meals. It learns to cook. It learns to cook and clean for itself. It's self-sufficient. Actually, that wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> A giant chandelier killed Ash and Pikachu, but they were revived by Haunter, Gengar, and Ghastly. That is true. Wait, was that true? Oh, yeah, and then they had that like, weird like ghost adventure for that entire episode. All right. I love that group. <laughs> I can't remember if that was before or after they fought Sabrina. I think that was before. Yeah, because Ash needed a ghost Pokemon to fight uh, her psychic Pokemon. I still think uh, one of the coolest um, reveals they did was for Magmar. It, it has to be the best one they did in the show. He just comes I out of. How do you train your Angemon? Well, it's not Ag Angemon that I have a problem with. It's like Anja Woman. <laughs> I mean, they both have attitude problems. Angemon is like, fine, I'll do it. The other one just gives me sass. I mean, they both do it, but, you know, it's different kinds. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a pipe in here that I... For, like... I, I've played Super Mario World most of my life, and I've never seen this room ever. Because I never thought it would be a room that would have anything in it, and it actually has nothing in it. I don't know. I got my copy of Super Mario World used, and it was already, like, mostly beaten. So, like, I got to explore all the levels and shit. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I was not very good at these games. So, like, my bro I would just play through my brother's save files, because they were... They had... Of course, I would fall into a pit. Uh... My brothers were a lot better at the games than I I was, clearly. Just because, you know, they were older. They they knew what they were doing. I didn't. Uh so I would play off of their save files just to um just to see what the rest of the game was. I don't know, it was like that kind of with Sonic 3. Like I went to a friend's house who like was into Sonic and he had beaten Carnival Night Zone. So I'm like, how did you get past it? And he's like, you press up and down. I'm like, really? Oh, I got to learn that on stream. <laughs> uh, way before Knuckles Channel took off, uh, I streamed on my old channel. And uh, a, couple, a couple of my friends were there. And it was like, yeah, no, we're not going to tell you. We want you to figure this out yourself. I was like, okay, fine. So I was trying everything I could to figure out how to go through it. And it's like, you press up and down. Why would you do that? <laughs> It sounds like that story of the um, the girl whose dad wouldn't tell her how to use a can opener. <laughs> yeah, he like he gives her the can opener and is like, okay, well, think about how they designed this and how it would work. And they spent like seven hours like letting her try to open this damn can. That can't be real. I don't believe that. Oh, it's, it's totally real. <laughs> oh my gosh. Polly B from the 303, thank you so much for the raid of seven. Everyone who is a part of that raid, welcome. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're all having a good day. Uh, So, uh, what stream did you come by or from? Like, what were you playing or doing? Forgot you can do more than play games on Twitch. Polly B from the 303 is raiding with a party of seven. So, Polly, what were you playing or doing on stream? Yeah, I suck at rapping. Sorry, guys. We were making music, started a remix of Tropical Resort from Sonic Colors. Nice, nice. Just in time for uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate. Uh, I need to buy that, like, finally. I haven't done the pre-order thing at all. And neither have I. Uh, I've been considering reaching out for a review code for the Xbox version, and then I'll just buy 
a Switch version for myself because I don't I don't want to pay $80 and get two different versions of the game. Or actually, it would be $85 if I want to get like the early access, so I can just start working on content right away. Well, yeah, because I just gotta start doing hacking stuff. So, but they know what I do. They probably wouldn't want to give me a <laughs> review copy. Probably not. It's a shame, though, because it's, I mean, it's, but then again, it's like, oh, well, it's not something they can officially endorse. I don't know, man. The other day, there was a post from uh, Ben something. What's his name? He was, he did the voice of Sonic in the Sonic movie. Oh, Ben Schwartz? Ben Schwartz. And he was like, oh, what's this crowd control thing? And, like, he was so close about, like, oh, yeah, maybe he'll play Sonic Crowd Control, the ones that I've designed on stream. <laughs> like, that would be pretty cool, but I don't think that's going to happen at this point. That's a shame. It would have been awesome to see that. Speaking of colors, what's past the Demon Cube for the 3DS version? I can't get past... Uh, the DS version? I don't know. I don't have that game. I'm slowly finishing my Sonic game collection. There's just some games I'm not willing to pay for, like uh, Sonic Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed uh, uh, on PlayStation Vita is like $90. I am not willing to do that. Oh, yeah, I never got that one. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. It's like, this is nearly $90. That is ridiculous. I am not paying that. It was probably like cheap on some point and it like there for a while I was just looking at like five dollar games and I was like, okay, if a game gets below a certain price, I'll pick it up. And that's why you have some of the stuff there like that um brain teaser one and a few of the other ones. Oh, okay. Seriously, why that's kinda of what I'm doing for Switch right now. It's like if it's like below twenty bucks and I can afford it, then I like pick it up. I'm still mad about uh I think it was GameStop that did it. They had Assassin's Creed 3 remastered. Um, there was a they messed up on their website and they had it for zero dollars. You just had to pay the shipping and you just had to pay the shipping on it. And it was for the Switch, for Xbox, and for PS4. Like all of those were free. I was like, oh well, I could just pick up three versions and flip the other two, or flip one of them because I was going to give another one to my friend. And the next day, is like, sorry, we canceled your, your order. I was like, uh, come on. I just wanted the game. And yeah, I, I usually do that when it comes to physical stuff. Yeah, if it's digital and they make a mistake, they tend to just honor it. Um, well, because Wal they can't really recall your key. Yeah. Uh, Walmart was like that with uh, Captain Toad, where they... And I want to say, like, Target did the same thing with, like, Mario Kart or something. It was It was weird. Or Animal Crossing, maybe? No, it was Yoshi's Woolly World. Oh, okay. Or it's like they made it like basically free, or if you added like 20 of them, it was like nothing. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> um, I think Captain Toads was like, the DLC was $5, but what people found out is that if you bought that, you were also given the full game. So I took advantage of that. So, and this was the Switch version, so... Um, already have 99 lives. It's funny because I completely ignored that. <laughs> There's just things I'm used to doing. Plus, if I get stuck into one of the special stages, I'm kind of stuck in here. There it is. Yoshi's Crafted World. Oh, okay. That one. I don't know why I said Wooly's World. I, don't... Well, I mean, you did include... Uh... Was it... You, I don't know. I need to look it up. No, it was Kirby's Epic Yarn was what I was also thinking of, but that's not the same thing as Yoshi. I don't know. I don't know where I got Wooly from. I mean, that was one of the games you included with the Wii U. Oh, it was? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Crafted World and... Yeah, they're different games. Okay. Yeah. What was funny is that um, I think about... A week ago or two weeks ago or something, I was going through my uh, 3DS games because I was looking for something, and I, I completely forgot that I owned a copy of the 3DS port of, uh, of Yoshi's Woolly World. I was like, oh, that's interesting. 
There's a couple games where I have like the 3DS version and also the Wii U version. I think. I I, I would have to go through my uh. I, I, I would need to go We're through my We're getting collection. to the point where those Wii U games will probably start to go up in value, if not already. I gave it about another two or three years. And then the collecting for that system will get expensive. And at least it has a skin on it, too. That way, if it does get messed up, you can always just peel it off and it'll be funny. It's fine. I'll, I'll leave it the way it is. Like, I know in the next month that Wii U is going to get a lot of use just because, uh, well, I have a hand right after, right after I had the, um, uh, I had the games, I actually bought a couple more. <laughs> That's how I ended up with, uh, Lost World. And, with Lost World? Uh, Sonic Lost World. Oh, and then okay. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. I bought those right away, um... I bought Bayonetta 1 and 2 because I wanted them both on a disc rather than like a digital code from the Wii U ver or the uh, Switch version. Yeah, my plan was to buy it and I just I just stopped buying Wii U stuff. <laughs> I stopped using it. And then uh, I got into the Xenoblade games because one of my friends is like really huge into it. And I bought Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I thought was going to be more expensive because I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the most expensive one right now. Or at least it's uh, the DLC is the most expensive thing you could buy in the series, because on the Switch they're out of print. So um, there's like you can't go and buy a retail copy for sixty bucks. Now you have to pay either ten dollars more, or with the DLC they're like almost a hundred dollars. Yeah, that's just crazy. Nintendo needs to like chill out with that stuff. Like Nintendo, please reprint these games. I I want the. Uh, Torna and the uh, Gold Country DLC. I, I just want the DLC without having to pay nearly a hundred bucks for it. I can't remember what it was. It was either Xenosaga or Xenoblade was like a GameStop exclusive for the Wii. Uh, Xenoblade. That Xenoblade. Was the... And then they like, they did this really crappy thing where they would like open them up. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, re I remember that. And then be like, oh, it's it's a used game. So it's going for like three times more. Oh, I didn't know about that part. I thought it was just the uh, the old GameStop, like, oh, it's a new game, but we opened it. Oh, they did that to me, too, recently, and I was, like, pissed. And then people were like, oh, I don't know why you're pissed. It's like a game's a game. It's like, well, I don't plan on playing the damn game. <laughs> I bought a new game because I wanted a new game, and I wanted it sealed. I remember there was a time where I was talked into buying a used copy of uh, Golden Sun on DS, and... Years later, I was kicking myself for that just because the new copy was only like $3 more. Get the case and everything. It was all nice. And to get a replacement case like these days, it cost me like an extra $13. I'm like, I'm not making good decisions here, but I'm still mad about that. Yeah, I don't ever buy games used unless I can get the case. Exactly. Uh, that's like I now because of that purchase. My thing is that if it doesn't come with the case, I don't want it. Or Same thing with that um, copy of Luigi's Super Mario Luigi U or whatever, the green one. I like, it took me forever to track that down. And even then it was like, oh, well, I'm looking for one with a case. And yeah. I think in the end they had to like swap me another disc because the first one had a scratch on it. But yeah. luckily I was able to piece that one together. Okay. I think there's maybe one or the game that I had to get the case and stuff for it because I only had it I only had it loose, but I can't remember what it was. Slim Jam says I just bought Link's Awakening Game Boy Color, waiting for it to show up. So did you buy Link's Awakening or Link's Awakening's DX? Well, if it's GBC, then it's got to be DX. Well, actually, wait, no. Isn't that, a, isn't that a Super Game Boy game? No, it it's like, there's two different versions. There's that and then the DX. Oh, okay, okay. And they both, like, are basically the same. I think just one has, like, enhanced Game Boy Color support. It has, it has the color support and it has the color dungeon. 
which will either um, can give you a power up that'll either give you double attack or double defense. Uh, they brought that over to the Switch version, which I will say it's a fine remake. It's just a little too close to the original game and not worth sixty dollars. They made it in the Unreal Engine. <laughs> They're using Unreal Engine in any way they can. Well, I think that they've gotten tired of like making their own engines, which is fine. Like at this point, I don't think you need to make a, bes a bespoke engine for almost anything now. It's like just, it's like oh, uh, got a remake. Just outsource it to oh, uh, is it Grizo or Grezo? I got nothing against them. That 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 company's done good work with uh, Ocarina and uh, Majora's Mask. I played through Ocarina 3DS, but I didn't play through. Um, Majora's Mask 3DS, and that's because they did some weird stuff with the um, with the inventory management. Like you actually had to use the touch. Yeah, uh, Majora's Mask is the one that more people have disliked. I think that was one of the reasons. The other one was like the placement of some of the masks or the Zora eggs or whatever it was. Uh, it was done. It wasn't exactly like how the original was. Uh, the Ocarina of Time remake was very faithful to the original. Dang it, I took the wrong exit. But yeah, I beat the, um, one just didn't beat the other. And it's just, oh, those stupid touch controls just sucked. Yeah, they're not very good. Well, I mean, like, it's hard to do fast menuing, especially when you're, when you have to, like, oh, I'm going to pull out the stylus or I'm going to have to press it with my fingers. It's like, no, I like to pop open the inventory, grab whatever, and just get out quickly. <laughs> See, the problem with that is, like, being able to play uh, Citra, not exactly something I can do right now. Just because running a uh, five- or six-year-old laptop right now, <laughs> that's my main computer. You don't have an actual 3DS? Uh, I have an actual 3DS, but it's not modded. Um, I think when I first got my new 2DS, because that I was originally going to get the capture mod for it uh, before I found out they were sold out. Probably should have looked first. That was like $100 wasted. Um, I Once I realized, I was like, oh, well, I'll mod it just to mess with it and see what's going on with it. And thinking that I was out of options for capture and I didn't like the capture, so I reverted it back. But I did play a little bit of homebrew on it before. Yeah, because you could do like some streaming capture stuff, and it's not too bad, but it's still not awesome. Well, the Wi-Fi in my room is pretty bad, so I it wasn't like it wasn't reliable enough to where I would be okay with it, or where I could uh, do it. Um, and not yeah, you would have had to have gotten a cheap router and just like sat it next to it. Yeah, so waiting on another method was what I had to do, and I did that for my uh, 3DS XL. Or I had to buy a, a 3DS XL because I was like the only one available. I was like, all right, I'll do it. But if they run out of capture boards, I'm going to be really pissed about it. Thankfully, they, they had enough. It just took like over a month to get it. So I was just like really anxious that entire month. <laughs> because it was like not only was it uh, a capture mod, it was an expensive capture mod. So I wasn't feeling very comfortable about that. Yeah, they kind of know that they have like the market corner to make kind of charge what they want. Well, this was like shortly after Katsukitty uh, went out of business. Oh yeah, so, so they really know that they could charge whatever they wanted. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a, a European store named uh, Murky, which had some of Katsukitty's uh, remaining boards. And a little, a little mess up I did costed me about like another twenty or thirty dollars on top of what I paid for it. Ooh, you messed up the soldering. No, I I didn't do it myself. I had it done for me because there was no way I was going to do that myself. Uh, 
No, it's just I was supposed to list it as like some kind of item that was like a very cheap item. Just so that way they're not paying a lot for shipping. Oh, for like the import duties or whatever. Yeah, I forgot I forgot to do that part, so I had to pay whatever they were charged extra for. It's like okay. Yeah, that was an act that was a, that was my mistake. I think I did everything in Yeah, I'm waiting on some stuff from China right now. I bought some more bootlegged Digimon stuff, so Hopefully they arrive soon. Uh, the one thing I'm waiting on, I don't know exactly where Play Asia is. I think it's actually Hong Kong or something. I think I'm not entirely sure about this one, but um, I bought Legend of Mana back in at the end of June, and I've been waiting on it ever since. So you I know need... there's a store that I watched their like vlogs, and they had some copies in. I'm. See, the thing is, I'm so mad about it because it's like, even if I bought it from Amazon, I could get it within like three days or something, or it'll show up like right away. And all I'm doing is paying like an extra $10 on it, as opposed to this game, like for a game that isn't in the, that isn't like sold at a GameStop or something. Just because Square, I don't know what's wrong with them. Well, because they're Square. It's like, they did it so well with Trials of Mana, it was like, it was really well done, it, it sold more than they expected. And then Legend of Mana Remastered gets uh, a digital only in the West. Oh, shoot. Okay, I was not expecting that pipe to undershoot that jump completely. I blame that pipe. Oh, just the physical copy of the remake, Willie Ziggur says. Yes, the physical copy of the remake. Um, like, Trials of Mana, that was awesome. Like, I... As soon as I found out there was a physical version, I was like, yep, I want that immediately. Uh, I even did the same thing for Collection of Mana when that came out on Switch. Uh, I waited for them to release the physical copy. Only because I knew they were selling it in the US, but Legend of Mana Remastered is not... In, is not like it's a different case where it's like it's released in an Asian te uh, region that also supports English and it's like that's the best I'm gonna have to do and since the end of June I've been waiting for it and I feel like I'm gonna have to start reaching out to them because uh, I have heard nothing except for some of the people who have gotten their copies but that was like those who paid for express shipping it's like I, I didn't do that Yeah, definitely, like, well, you can't call them up. I was going to say, call them up, but don't call them up. No, <laughs> just I, send an email and just be like, I would like to either cancel my order or want my money back, and they'll respond for me, I'm sure. Yeah, the original Legend of Mana, it was maybe, like, 600 people who have nostalgia for that game. I am i didn't play the original. I just slowly started getting into the Mana series uh, in the past couple of years, just because... Uh, I think about 10 years ago, I played an MMO that ripped assets from the from Trials of Mana on on Super Nintendo and or Super Famicom and Sword of Mana, the reimagining of the first game. So I used to play that all the time when I was in high school. So that's how I slowly got into uh, the Mana series. You haven't played any other mana game either, just that one. I would recommend, if you have a Switch, go for the collection of mana. Uh, it, it's the original three games. Um, and it's about $30. It's actually not that bad. I mean, I guess if, I guess if you want to try out the games before owning it, there is other methods. Oh, then... Yeah, there is totally another method to uh, obtaining those games. It's not one I condone, but it is an option that exists. To afford a console, you mean like the, it's on the SNES one, that one? 
Well, it's um the uh collection of mana is on the Switch. Oh, okay. Uh I think looking for the game separately like Final Fantasy Adventure might not cost a whole lot, but once you start getting to like Secret of Mana, that's when it starts getting pricey. And Trials of Mana never got a uh, Western release until the collection was released. Which is probably like, which was the biggest thing for that. Also, kind of got on my nerves a bit because I bought, I bought the Japanese version and I was going to play it off my Retron. And then they announced collection. I was like, well, I mean, I, I get to pirate a console and download a Switch. Easy peasy. Exactly. Again, uh, can't really approve that kind of method, but that is a that is a a thing that exists. I'm just trying to play it safe. <laughs> and I haven't turned on my switch in like what month are we in? Uh, we are in August. I, I actually stopped for a moment. I forgot what month. Like we're in. eight months, basically. I haven't turned it on at all this year. I, I play a lot of Pokemon, so I was doing like raids and stuff, so I tend to play my Switch regularly. Like, I barely play stuff on my PC, even though I have a lot of games on it that I should probably get around to. I just don't. Oh no, the last time I turned it on was for the Mario Odyssey DLC stuff. Wait, that game had DLC? I mean, it was, like, technically DLC, the cat stuff. Oh, okay. Like, it's built on the Odyssey engine. Like, they didn't even go back. Oh, 3D World. Okay. Yeah, I'm just 3D like, World. wait. <laughs> Odyssey? I'm, like... I mean... But yeah, 3D World was... Yeah, like... they reused a lot of Odyssey's code base for that. That's fine. I mean, it, like you, it just feels like it feels and looks like Odyssey. I thought it was pretty good. Mm, I beat it pretty quickly. I'm kind of surprised. Although I was using some hacks and stuff, too, which is kind of fun. <laughs> Oh, I forgot how this level uh, determines where you went to next. It was like the gimmick of this entire level is that depending on what you do or however many coins you have or something like that, uh, you go to a different section. It's almost like... Uh, I have the same exit. You know, Slim Jam, like, I don't play games unless I'm, like, working or, like, hacking it or doing something like that. Because normal games just aren't fun unless I'm exploiting the hell out of it. <laughs> Time and coins. Like, okay, that's Breaking the system is the game for me, not really the game itself. And I usually have to uh, find games that are not on PC, so that way I can get away from my computer. <laughs> Which is why, even though I have a copy of Celeste on PC, I still bought it on uh, I still bought it on console, <laughs> just so I can walk away from it <laughs> and still play it. Oh crap! It gave me the same. Oh, I did it again. Same last last area, so I'm going to be stuck with the same exit. I can't even remember the last Steam game I bought. Like, I just don't buy games anymore. Although I should ask, like, Boundary Break if he wants to do an episode on Psychonauts 2 so I can work on that, because that'd be fun. When did that game release? Like, today, I think. Oh, okay. I saw Snapcube doing a stream of it, and then one of my other friends is doing a stream of it, so... Yeah, I saw somebody streaming it as well, and it's like, okay. Oh, 
Oh man, I remember when Notch was like, when, like, let's make Psycho Nuts 2 happen. Wait, when who said it? Notch, the, the uh, Minecraft guy. Oh, yeah. And then that didn't happen, thankfully. I did it again. I'm getting the same exit over and over again. This is ridiculous. Uh, how do we get the normal exit? By me not doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, that's a different one. I'll take it. Yeah, there were a lot of good games that just, like, died too quickly, I think. There were. Like, remember uh, Quantum Conundrum? Actually, I don't even... I don't remember that game. People are like, oh, it's the new portal. Was that another because, game? Like, that... You could switch between like worlds where like everything's like fluffy or like slime or whatever. And like play with the physics. It was like all insane. Oh, okay. I'll be honest, one thing that I really hate seeing these days is whenever uh, whenever there's a game that kind of like is no longer like the biggest game out at, or the biggest game being played, whenever you see the comment of dead game, it's like, I, I mean, does it really matter now? I think they sold all the copies they'd like. Yeah, what is well, I mean, like there's stuff like WoW, like World of Warcraft right now that's I don't know. It's just sad. Yeah. Like, WoW's biggest competitor wasn't Final Fantasy or some other MMO. It was... Its biggest competitor was, it, was itself. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's a shame that the game's going the way it is, but honestly, it's like, it's even... It's even worse well, it knowing... sucks too, because I was thinking about, like, restarting my account to, like, play a little bit. Like, right before those allegations came out, and I'm like... Nope, I guess I'm not doing that now. I I stopped. I legit stopped playing Call of Duty. Like I haven't touched my uh, I haven't touched uh, Black Ops Cold War. After that was after that dropped, I'm just like, I don't feel right playing it. Like I can't do it. Oh, I haven't played Call of Duty since. Oh, which one was that? Like maybe Black Ops Two. I remember playing through Black Ops One. But even then, like, I would go in and just do, like, the zombie modes, and I'm like, that's it. I think uh, with Black Ops Cold War, that was when I just started getting into the zombies content and really enjoying it. Because I I was just, like, all multiplayer. So I'd be in the lobbies with all of the uh, really toxic players shouting stuff <laughs> into the microphone. But, um... When Black Ops Cold War came out, I just did not like the multiplayer at all. I, there was just so many issues with it, and I'm just like, you know what? I'll, I'll play I'll play zombies and see how it is, and I really got hooked on it. And then we didn't get a there wasn't a lot of content coming out for it uh, until I think season two. But then it came. <laughs> there was another issue where it's like it's getting not a lot of content to support that game mode because it's all going towards uh, the multiplayer. I don't know. I just hated that, like, they were always releasing map packs. Like, it felt like every month or whatever, there's a new map, and then you had to buy a new map pack. Well, thankfully, uh, well, with the uh, newer games, instead of buying new map packs, you just you just automatically download them. The only downside is the fact of how massive these files got. Like, I think Black Ops Cold War is over 200 gigs. Ooh, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> There's another reason why I want I wanted to wait for the next season, just put all my COD points into it and uninstall the game. Because I have like over a thousand COD points uh, on PC and the dumbest thing is that you can get COD points on both PC and console, they just don't transfer. Like, you don't share them on both platforms. 
Uh, that's probably for the best, because like I'm sure that PC players were hacking the crap out of those numbers. I guess so, but it also meant that if I wanted to... Um... Because I was one of those people that did pay for COD points for like one of their starter things, so that way I can uh, get closer to the to the battle pass and get all the extra content for it. I did do that, so when it's like the points I earn on console doesn't transfer to PC, that it was like okay, so then I can only unlock one on one platform and one on another because I didn't play them all on console or all on PC, so I had to be very. I had to be very careful where I was earning COD points from, otherwise I wasn't going to be able to afford the next battle pass. I didn't want to drop any more money into the game. And then with all of, with the whole, with all of the allegations that had come out uh, recently, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I should play this. It just doesn't feel right anymore. Uh, I really wish they would go in and make a new Bioshock game. Although that's not Blizzard, so... I it's just want not, a new Bioshock game. It, it's not Blizzard, but I'll take a new Bioshock game. Because, like, Bioshock Infinite was so good. And I really wish that there was, like, some data links, leaks or dumps or found hard drives with, like, old versions of that game because they remade that game, like, four different times. I would love to see, like, a giga leak on that. <laughs> or, like, I don't know. That's one of those things where it's, like, if you ever get a chance to go to, like, an alternate dimension, like, the one where it's, like, a different version of Bioshock would probably be a good one. That's up there with me for, like, getting the, um, the version of Back to the Future with that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the version of Shrek with Chris Farley. That, yeah, that would that would be like the one I would be curious to see. Even if I have to live in it, be like it'd be curious. I'm curious to see exactly how that would play out. The world where Jim Farley or Chris Farley never died. I, I would really want that. Although, would we have Paul Blart Mall Cop, or would it just be Chris Farley as Paul Blart Mall Cop? Okay, if we get that, I'd be okay with it because I I would honestly prefer someone who's funnier. Would there be no Kevin James? Is basically what I'm saying. Oh, oh no! Then Chris Farley would be the the president in Pixels. I actually saw that movie for the first time the other day, and it was terrible. Like he wanted to do the girl or something. I don't know. No wait, that was the other pathetic, uh, nerdy guy. Well, yeah, I know. It was like it was in that movie though, where he's like, "Oh yeah, she's my girlfriend" or whatever. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell am I watching?" Uh, it's an Adam Sandler movie. And then seeing like her, she's all pixel. She's like, she looks like one of the uh, like a digitized actor from like Mortal Kombat, in a way. And I'm just like, "Oh, that looks so cool." Okay, you know what? I, I like the special effects from it. It's kind of cool. And then she turns more and more real, and it's like. No, this isn't happening. And it's like, eh, no. She becomes real. And they fall in love. And I'm just questioning things now. How does a man do a cheat code in a car? How does he how does he do a cheat code in an arcade game where anybody can see him? What does he know the person who's switching out the boards? Is this another? Oh, well, I can't. Like, I can't that too, it. but then like they sent the boards to space. So how does that happen? It's like he would have had to have, like modify the boards, which means that they pulled out the arcade boards to send them into space. And nobody noticed that like they changed the ROMs or anything. <laughs> No, it's like a certain other person who made a world record and then shortly after made a record in another game and uh is Oh you one. mean um with Steve Weeby and all that other stuff? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Yeah, that uh, was messed up. Like he waited for Steve Weeby to like get the high score and then he's just like, Oh yeah, I had this one on tape that I did like years ago. And it, it looks legit. Oh, I got crushed.
At, then at the end, Kubert became the woman. That's right. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh my god. Why? <sighs> oh, I forgot that's. Yeah, we don't say that guy's name because he might sue. It's like Biggie Smalls, you can't say his name three times in a mirror. What, otherwise you start hearing Big Papa or something? No, because otherwise he shows up, you stop him. Oh. Or at least that's what they said in that episode of South Park, I think. Oh, I was going to say, wait, wouldn't people want that? Yeah, they dare Butters to do it, and then he does it, and then he sees Biggie Smalls. <laughs> it was a pretty good episode. We don't make episodes of South Park like that anymore. Nah, they... I don't know, there's just something to, like, the newer episodes where I just can't really get behind them as much. Well, at least we know that they're gonna have, like, 20 more seasons. Because, like, they got renewed for, like, another 10 or something. It was crazy. Oh, and to do movies for like HBO Max or whatever. Oh, cool! I'll be able to watch those when they when they air, or when they. I don't know. I know. Uh, of all the movies that they've had on HBO Max, the only one I've seen was that really terrible Tom and Jerry movie. It wasn't too too bad. I, I know. It's just I, I couldn't. It just it. wasn't very good either. Exactly. Uh, I was going to watch Godzilla vs. Uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong. I never got around to it. Oh, it's that on there? I haven't seen that one. And I forgot to watch Space Jam. Uh, the, uh, the second one. Oh, A New Legacy? Yeah, I forgot you know, to Michael Jordan's in that movie. <laughs> I know the joke in that one. It's actually really well done. I thought it was pretty clever. I mean, yeah, they had some good jokes. I know there was like a scene where they rap or something and I couldn't sit through it. Yeah, Porky does a rap for some reason. I don't know. It's like, wasn't this like the thing that they always try to pander to kids in the 90s where they was like, oh, they're rapping now, so it's cool. It's like, I'm pretty sure that stopped being a thing. I don't know. I am kind of sad that they didn't get the same voice actors for like Bugs Bunny as the, as the first movie. Because Billy West did the voice of Bugs Bunny in the first one. I actually didn't know that. But like they didn't bring him back again, which kind of sucks. That would have been cool. Well, because he would talk about that movie like all the time. Like if you look up interviews with um with Billy West, he would like talk about it very favorably, you know? LeBron's acting was so stale. Really? Well, he is a basketball player. Like, I really wasn't expecting a Shakespearean uh, performance, you know what I mean? <laughs> True. Gosh, I slipped off again. I'm losing it. <laughs> You're using that spin jump a lot. I would like, I never use it. It's useful. Which is probably for... why I'm not doing competitive Mario. <laughs> I don't do competitive Mario either. It's just, it was like one of those things where we um, eventually finding out that certain, okay, where I could just immediately drop on that. Uh, I don't remember the name of that enemy. I think one of them is like named Sparks or something, and I don't remember what the other one's called. Oh, have you seen the new Suicide Squad yet? Not yet. Yeah, that's pretty good. There was a, I, I think it was like a week or two ago, I was hanging out with my friends and they gave me... Every single one of them gave me flack for not really watching movies in my free time. It's like, I just don't really know what I feel like watching. I'm never in the mood in the mood to watch anything. 
Vivo also came out too. And that's like a musical though, so. Yeah. A damn song stuck in my head. Oh, yeah, Slim Jam, oh. I was gonna I was gonna ask, is this was LeBron's acting on the level of like Shaq in uh Kazam? I'm trying to remember the name of the other movie he was in where he had superpowers. Or he sort of had superpowers. Well, and he it was, did a comic book movie, and it was like Steel, I think. I forgot the name of the movie, and it's on Disney+. Plus. Are you sure you don't mean the one where Sinbad is the genie? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Uh, Well, there's one where Shaq was the genie, that's Kazam. Uh, that one's on HBO, and then there's one where, uh, there's one on Disney+. Plus. He's not a genie, but he's a superhero. And they actually make a joke, uh, they actually make a reference to the fact that he can't shoot free throws. But I, I can't remember the name of it, my brother told me about it the other day, because we were watching... I don't like know, a, they do a bit of that in um in Space Gem as well. I don't like this. Oh, they made fun of him like leaving Cleveland or something. <laughs> oh yeah, he always leaves. That's what he does, he leaves. He left Cleveland, he left, he left, he left, he left. Just checked Kazam is on D plus. Oh, is it? Apparently, I guess it's one of those like Disney subsidiary movies. Then it wouldn't be on. Because hmm. I found that on HBO. That was that's weird. Oh well, maybe it's just one of those movies that's on on multiple services. Yeah, very few of those left. Yep. Although I do, I do remember Netflix at one point was the one service that had all the sequels to like, they had all the crappy sequels to good Disney movies. They had like Mulan 2, they had, uh, what was it, Goofy's, they had like the second Goofy movie on there, which wasn't as good as the first one or something like that. They It was only sequels they had. Oh, did you watch Invincible? Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a show and it's on Amazon. Oh, actually, yeah. Um, I've seen. I've only seen like two or three episodes. Uh, that one's really good. But I have seen it. Um, there was a day that I was, again, another one of those days where I was just hang out with my friends. But uh, this was like a. At first, they were forcing me to watch Demon Slayer because I didn't watch it. <laughs> I've never seen it either. I don't know what. That's it's like, like anime, right? Yeah, it's anime. It's like, all right, we're gonna have, we're gonna sit you down, we're gonna have you watch it because you told us you only seen, you've only seen how many episodes? I'm like, um, probably one or two. It's like, all right, we're gonna have you watch it because they wanted to go watch the movie later. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go with them. <laughs> and yeah, I don't watch anything over seventy-two episodes. So oh, like, the all the show on jumps or whatever, just like no, I'm done. Oh, no, uh, this one's like twenty-six. Yeah, so. that's not too bad. It's reasonable, but I'm terrible with keeping up with shows, unless I get really hooked on them. Like My Hero Academia. Um, I'm like way behind on the current season of that. I only got four episodes into that show. I didn't hate it or anything. It was just I have like really bad attention. I have my attention span is terrible. I just really hate it when they do when animes, especially anime does this a lot where they're like oh we're gonna do a tournament and it's gonna take all season yeah they did that in like dragon ball they did it in like everything basically isn't that done like a few times in dragon ball i feel like that was oh i'm sure yeah i i could dragon ball super was like the one show i was like you know what nope I'm, I'm checking out of this one i can't they even spent like a long time on the tournament in sonic and sonic x yeah yeah 
I think that was like five or six episodes. I never really saw Sonic X. I only saw a few episodes. <laughs> yeah, when they were covering the Sonic Battle storyline. Oh, okay. Like Demon Slayer, uh, liked it. Haven't seen the movie though. The movie's pretty good. Uh, I <laughs> got that pod mic dialed in. Probably not. You'd probably. <laughs> Uh, Need on the Rocks, hello, how's it going? How you doing today? How was the stream? I know you were streaming earlier because there were two streams going on at the same time and I wanted to watch Wind Waker, so unfortunately I didn't go to your stream. But yeah, um, watching the movie and then also watching more of the show for Demon Slayer, it got me to want to like continue it and then Usual thing happens where I just don't keep up with it. It was like I was trying you know to watch. What? It's like anime is kind of like MMOs. And here's the thing. Like lately there is this trend about MMOs where you can't. People were saying that you can't judge an MMO to like 100 hours in. It's like what? It sounds like, like a very similar. So you're thing. saying that like they should just play the end game and the end game should be like the only thing that they judge. It's like, no, I don't think so. I think you've got to, you've got to make like those first six hours like a good experience. Yeah, uh, not sure if I got that with Final Fantasy 14. I finally got around to playing more than about an hour of it, uh, which I'm playing on a trial, so I'm not spending any money on it yet. Uh, and I was told like, yeah, actually, the beginning of the game is just a lot of grinding. It's like, oh, joy. I I've been watching a guy play that on stream. It's not too bad, I don't think. Especially, like, if you can get into the story, there's, like, a lot of free story stuff to yeah. ch chew your teeth on, I guess. Yeah, apparently, like, after a certain point, it just starts getting really good, so... It's like, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm used to games where it's like I sit down and I grind for a while. Like, the mana-inspired MMO I played 10 years ago was like... Yeah, I, I, could, I could do that and see how good it is. Uh... As for the whole, like, Demon Slayer content, it was like, they had me watch it because, like, we didn't even get to finish the series before we went to go see the movie because we only had so much time. <laughs> so, there's a huge gap that I haven't seen yet. It's about, like, 12 or 13 episodes that I need to watch. But yeah, as for, um, I don't know, it's, it's weird because, like, shows that I think that I would love especially the ones that are based around MMOs. Like, it seemed like I would love them, but then when I start watching them, it's like, it's kind of boring. I tried... Oh, you mean like... um, Log Horizon was one like that I tried. Sword Art or whatever, right? Oh, actually, Sword Art's a different case. I binge-watched the entire first season, and then afterwards I hated the whole show. I don't know. It's like always the same kind of stuff. Like, oh, we're in an MMO. Oh, we can't log out. Oh, it's not really a game. We can't die. It's always the same, like, melodramatic stuff in the same episode. Mm -hmm. When I got to the end of the first season, I was so pissed off. and was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And I wasted an entire day watching it because it was like, if there's this technology that could potentially kill somebody, why would it still be on the market? Why would there still be a variation of it on the market? How is VR not dead in this world? I have a lot of pent-up rage against Sword Art Online, so uh, I know there are people who enjoy it. I'm just not one of them. Anymore. I think I saw like the first episode and I was just like, no, I'm, I'm not doing this. I know Log Horizon was another one, but uh, there's like one thing that kept bothering me whenever I would watch anime, especially when it had to, especially when it uh, came to like games, or if it had like, if it was in a game setting, or in a game world, uh, whenever they over-explain, like, the ability that they're using. It, it just seemed like it got it got very tiring for me. I think Log Horizon had that in its first episode. It's like, I can't. Um, Sword There's Art. one called, like... Oh, uh, what was that? Uh, like, Sword Art was bullshit with it because... I mean... 
It's like, oh, well, you have this ability to dual wield in the next game. Oh, you get to keep the ability to dual wield because we didn't we didn't remove it. Apparently, this game's built off the previous one that, oh, yeah, it killed about 10,000 people. Sorry if it's much further in the series, but it's it's like all the rage that I have about this show. I, I, I did find out that one of the more recent seasons is a lot better, so. That's fine. Well, there's like I that time I got reincarnated as slime. That was like, OK, I guess, because like they don't go too far, like into the game stuff. It's just like they use that to explain why they're kind of overpowered. Oh, OK. Um, same thing with this other one. Like I got reincarnated into a game and became immortal and then killed and then spent 300 years killing slimes. It has a stupidly long name. Which annoys me. I don't know why anime does that. There are some shows that it's like, you can shorten the name a little bit. Uh, uh, there's one that I keep seeing and only be like, for some reason it gets recommended. The name is really stupid. It's like, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And that's actually kind of short. And it has, and it has like a second, and it's like for second season, they don't, they don't just put season two. They just call it like, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon too? And it's like, come again. <laughs> but then again, there, I think there was one called high score girl. And it's like, there was, uh, at first I'm like, eh, there's probably no way I'd get into this. I, I finished the whole thing. It's like, yeah, no, it was awesome. <laughs> it was great. So I, I think it's just like one of those. I have. It, oh, it I saw clips of that one. That's like the one where they show a bunch of like arcade games and stuff, right? Yeah. I, I think it's one of those things where I have to actually sit down and watch the first episode. Like the genre means apparently means nothing for me. Like I have to actually sit down and try to watch it to see if I'm into it or not. And that's usually how I can watch it. Like I've tried with shows where it's like, oh, this would be something I would really like. It's got action and everything. And then I end up bored. Attack on Titan. I, I just couldn't get into it. Oh, there's recovery of an MMO junkie. Wait, that sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah, these two people like are in an MMO and then like the girls playing a guy character and the guys playing a girl character and they like fall for each other in game. OK, it, that's kind of interesting. I have seen it then. Um, I think I stopped watching because it felt like they jumped way too far ahead at one like early on. It's like, wait, hold on. You're not going to establish these characters or anything. You just jump right into the romance. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I need to give it another watch and see. I'm forgetting the name of the one where it's like two students. One of them's watching the other one just like mess around with like all these little gadgets he has or something. I'm forgetting the name of it, but I remember that was so entertaining. Oh, yeah. Pokemon Origins. <laughs> That's not the name of it, but... <laughs> No, no there is this uh, like obviously this other anime adaptation called Pokemon Origins that follows the story of like Red and Blue from the game. Yeah, I I love that one. I loved it so I much. Just, I just remembered that scene where he likes he fights Charmander, or he fights a Charmander, and the Charmander just like bites his Squirtle's neck and just like ah. That was so unsettling. God, it's like the worst scream ever. And in like the English dub, it's not like that. Uh, they also did that kind of censorship for Cubone and Marowak because there's actually a grunt that you hear out of the Marowak when it's killed, but you don't get that in the, uh, in the English version. I'm just like, that is, that's brutal, but it's really good. Like the show's really good. Not the, uh, not the killing. All right. I'm going to do a trick here. There's a section where you need to use like the little... Oh, wait, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. I clearly don't remember how to do this. Oh, I almost had it. 
It's like rather than using the uh, coin thing to uh, make the path, you can actually get it where you fly up and then you just crouch into it. I threw the link in chat, chat, if you want to see that scene. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. Oh, that poor Charmander. Oh, there's an image that I hate yeah, seeing. Yeah, it like. was Squirtle biting Charmander. <laughs> like, I, I love Squirtle. It evolves into my favorite Pokemon, but no, don't. <laughs> That's so mean. But I get it. it uh... Yeah, that was a really good version of the... It was a really good retelling of, like, the of the games. And I know that was mostly done just for, uh... Oh, dang, it took me to the wrong place. It, it was just, it was like... It was for, like, an anniversary or something. It, it was... It also felt like it was to, uh, market X and Y, because that was when it... Uh, they also had oh, yeah, the for sure. Charizard's Mega Evolution. Well, I think that's when they also bring back, like, Red and Gary, right? Yeah. Like, you fight them at the end of X and Y? I think that was in Sun and Moon. I don't remember X and Moon. Oh, yeah, it might have been Sun and Moon, yeah. I just watched now that. I'm thinking about I don't know, they all just blur together. I, I couldn't get into Sun and Moon. Like, I, I beat the first game, like, uh, Pokemon Moon, but... X and I, Y is the one where, like, the Pokemon dies and he gets sad or whatever, and then, like, that shit happens, right? I think so. <laughs> or it was, like, the person who waited, what was it, like, 3,000 years or something for his Pokemon? I don't remember yeah, the... Yeah, it's just, like, just, dude, get a new Pokemon. It's, like, that's not, that's not how... There's, not... like... Plenty of Charmanders and stuff just like that they give away, just yeah. Like Ash and his Tauros. <laughs> They're just out in the safari, just go catch them. Just don't have a gun pointed at you. Otherwise, no. Well, like he will... caught this entire herd of them and then like they never bring it up again. Well no, they they do bring it up. Well, yeah, I guess, like, they but, every time that there's, like, Tauruses at Professor Oak's house or whatever, there's, like, oh, yeah, they're Ashes Tauros, so they, they make that assumption. Yeah, and it's... And it's one of those things, like, yeah, sure, we know about it, but we've never seen it just because it's an episode they don't air because there is use of guns. Oh, yeah, that cop banned. <laughs> yeah. It's also why, you, you know, getting banned is also the reason why you don't see Porygon in the anime, even though it was Pikachu's fault, damn it. I think I have that episode, or I've definitely seen it. Because, like, I know I have that beach episode where, like, they banned it because of James's big <laughs> boobs. <laughs> Alright, I forgot. I know they included it somewhere. I think I have, like, it's, like, the fan sub or whatever. Oh, okay. I could have sworn there was, there was an, um, some kind of collection or some kind of DVD release that actually had it. So I don't know if uh, I don't know if that's real or not. I could just be reading. I probably am mistaking it for something else. Okay, I don't know. Redeem hydration. Oh, dang it! Oh, bye, Yoshi. I actually needed Yoshi. Oh, this thumbnail. Wait, what thumbnail? Um, I'll throw it in the Discord. I don't know if they automatically picked this thumbnail or if it was just like automatic or whatever, but it's like, why that one? It's of a Pokemon episode. <laughs> I know there was a meme and it's like, oh, why do I remember this episode? And they show her, it's like, oh, now I remember why. This now I rem remember this episode. I, I guess she was supposed to be like the anime version of the uh, first Elite Four member. 
I don't even remember. Like, there's tons of these episodes that I remember watching for sure, but I just don't know what, what went on. I mean, you know, really, I don't want to meet the guy. I don't want to meet the guy who actually remembers every single one of these episodes and what happened in each and every single one. That would be a very interesting individual. You know, like, you have to give up, like, stuff in your other, like, other parts of your life to make room for it. <laughs> It's like, I even saw the band episodes and I even have them right here. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Like, um, the beginning of Kingdom Hearts, like, oh, you want Pokemon knowledge? What will you sacrifice? <laughs> That's a series that I don't think I'll ever get near uh, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, you know that channel Mega64, they do like parodies and stuff. Yeah. There's a video where he's like, oh, did you know about Roxas? And then he goes up to random people and he, like, explains the storyline of these weird, obscure characters. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I guess I'll be doing Sage recordings tomorrow <laughs> instead. I completely ignored what time it was. Someone redeemed hydration. Did you do that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I wasn't thinking attention. <laughs> Although I will say there is one detail from the uh, from the Pokemon anime. The one detail that I'll never not question. Uh, when Whitney pres gives Ash the, uh, I forgot what badge it was. I think it was like the plane badge or something. Where did she take the badge out of? There's no pockets. And it didn't look like she was reaching for a back pocket. Isn't it like 10 okay, p.m.? Okay, so I think that episode is Beauty in the Beach, and I do have it. <laughs> and it's in English, except for like that one part, I think. Yeah, I think... Okay, so I was right about that. It did get uh, a, a release in the U.S. Yeah, they just cut James's big boobs. <laughs> oh no, they deflated him. <laughs> That's very mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's in there. Oh, with the amount that James cross dresses, you would like think he would be up to something. Although I don't know if that perpetuates that like bad stereotype of trans people, but like, uh, it's not for me to pass judgment on. Oh, was the new Pokemon Snap any good? Did you ever play that? Um, I have not played enough of it yet. I, I've had it for a while, but my brother was borrowing it for a long period of time, and I'm just like, okay, well, whenever, whenever you're done playing it, just let me know. And I started getting a bunch of other games. I've, I've had a bad habit of not finishing certain games that I own. Oh, that's right. Ash's mom has a Mr. Mime. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, and it's like the one cool thing it did was like put. I think they put it put Team Rocket in a box or an invisible well, box. Well, it's or something. like Ash's dad is Mr. Rocket. Oh no! Oh no! I mean, I I know people said it would. I know people joked about it being Professor Oak or you know fear, there was a theory it could be Giovanni or somebody, and then. There was also the theory that Giovanni's kid was actually the rival in uh, Gold and Silver. 
Well, they like people keep making that joke, like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, go ahead, um, go, like, go on this journey." Kid. Well, so I can uh, have some alone time with your mom. <laughs> I can just imagine Professor Oak doing the Carl <laughs> the Carl Weezer voice. Handball Jimmy's mom. <laughs> I don't know if that was like narrated or not. I have never done it. It's not bad. I mean, it's better than what I could do. I don't want to try it. Got your east and weast uh, mixed up. <laughs> east? I thought you meant weast. It's like that's west. You're fired again. Patrick, that's not a jar. That's ash ringing. <laughs> <laughs> One bowl. First, get a jar. I wumbo, you wumbo. <laughs> Firmly grasp it. <laughs> it's like I'm pretty sure I'm not the target demographic for SpongeBob, but the old episodes, I don't know, they just they just hit different. <laughs> if I ever stream like VR or like um Surgeon Simulator or whatever. Like, I'm definitely going to be saying that a lot. <laughs> Firmly grasp it. <laughs> when you're fed up with it, you just shout it and it just goes right through. <laughs> Patrick, that's a gun. Oh, it is. Oh, in the new series, they did a, of the new, like, series of Pokemon. They got rid of, like, the Nurse Jenny and Officer Joy thing, right? Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny. I think they still have Nurse Joy. I'm not entirely sure. Because, like, that was weird for a while. Like, you'd go through the entire series and all of them are fucking Officer Jenny. <laughs> and and all, all of them are Nurse Joy. And they're all related. Oh, yeah, and it wasn't until, like, halfway in that you get to see, like, a picture, like, a family picture, and it's, like, all of them together. It's like, that's... that is the scariest... If you're all here, who's defending the world? <laughs> it's like, and if you're all here, who's, who's helping all the sick Pokemon and hurt Pokemon? They just and left the How many of you are the evil twin? <laughs> it stopped being a twin when there was more than two. <laughs> Well, like, out of however many there are, there's bound to be one that's evil. It'd be amazing if it was, um, half of them were evil. Oh, yeah, I watched the Pop Trump movie. That's how bored I was. Wait, the what movie? The Paw Patrol movie. Oh! Right, I think I saw you tweet about that at some point. Yeah, there was a few things that just didn't make sense. <laughs> well, like, one was that, like, oh, yeah, they get all their funding from, like, selling merch. <laughs> it's the same merch <laughs> that, that they sell in real life. Oh, what? And the other one is, like, the whole story is basically just, like, about this dog who has PTSD about being dumped off in the city. But if all the dogs talk, you would think it would at least know the owner's name. And it could go, hey, that guy's dumping me off here. 
You know what I mean? I don't know why you'd be traumatized about it if it could talk and communicate. That's true. Rebel White 94 subscribed with Prime. Rebel White uh, 94, thank you so much for subscribing with Twitch Prime. How you doing today? <laughs> Getting that Jeff Bezos money. <laughs> you mean that CEO? On uh, Jeff Bezos pocket change. <laughs> right. Got to send him back into space. No. <laughs> Let's not send him back into space. <laughs> I hope I'm yeah, getting... it's kind of stupid how, like, all the bi billionaires were, like, fighting over getting into space first. I, I... I was like, yeah, well, I mean, that's a thing that happens, uh... I don't know. You know, say whatever you want about Bill Gates, but at least he's spending his money actually doing stuff and not like, oh, I'm gonna go to Mars. I mean, then again, people thought he was behind the vaccine, so... You know, yeah, I mean, like, you want to get into that weird stuff, but... Still, it's kind of nice that he actually spent his money kind of responsibly. Not a problem still playing Sonic 3. Oh, nice! How far are you into the game? Watch, he says Carnival Night. It's like, oh no. <laughs> Oh, uh, I wanted to keep that Yoshi. That was the good Yoshi. Launch Base Act 1 got all seven emeralds. Cool. Yeah, I remember in my copy of Sonic 3... I went through and I beat it, like, the six times with, like, one of each character combination. And with all emeralds, and then... Yeah, I did it again with Sonic and Knuckles attached, and then, like, I split up the saves. <laughs> and did the same thing. <laughs> I remember nobody... So, like, I had, like, one complete save with, like, Sonic, with just all the normal Chaos Emeralds, but not the Master... but not the, uh, Hyper Emeralds. And then one with the master with the hyper emeralds, I mean. Oh, okay. It's funny, nobody yeah. believed no one believed me when I said that um I didn't or uh when I first started the channel, there was a point where I did a stream where I was playing as Knuckles in Sonic 3 and Knuckles for the first time ever. And no one believed me. <laughs> Everyone thought I was just messing with them. I, I think I, I, I played as Knuckles, but that was only because I couldn't get past that part of Sonic, so. Yeah, because Knuckles' route doesn't have that, like, soft lock in it. Right. But also, um, I don't know, I, I just had, like, throughout the stream, somebody coming in, it's like, there's no way this guy didn't, hasn't beaten uh, Sonic 3 Knuckles as Knuckles. He's a Knuckles channel, it's like... I didn't name it after it for that game. Oh my god, stop fucking lying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I even had Red Hot Sonic hop into the stream. It's like, I don't believe this. It's like, yeah, it's true. But I, I eventually beat the game. It took me a few hours. It was frustrating because I wasn't used to it. Oh, yeah, I've been watching Jellystone. Or I watched Jellystone. Jellystone? Yeah, it has, like, all the Hanna-Barbera Hanna costumes. Or, not costumes, characters. You know, like Yogi Bear and Huckleberry Hound and... Right. Top Cat. Oh, okay. And Yogi's the doctor for some reason.
and like Boo Boo's like the nurse or like the secondary doctor, and Boo Boo always gets shit. <laughs> Like, in one episode, they get turned into jelly by, like, a gun, and then, like, Yogi bites his head off. Like, ooh, this gelatin sculpture of Boo Boo is right on point. <laughs> Just imagine that being, and, being written today. This gelatin... That was written today. Oh, God. I'm surprised you didn't say it was... I'm surprised you didn't say it was bussin'. <laughs> Whatever that means. Like, I don't know. I'm just ad-libbing, but, like, that wasn't the exact line. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the exact line. Oh, is that a new cartoon? I've seen ads for it. Yeah, it's on um, HBO Max. Oh, uh, okay. I need to start watching stuff on it. I'm paying monthly for that, and I'm not even using it. <laughs> we just, we need to set up, like, a password share system. I mean, I already have two other people using it, that's why. <laughs> I don't know, but then again, I download everything, so, yeah. I think that's how I saw the uh, Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, that was a... Oh, this level. I uh, I skipped through the Mortal Kombat movie up until the part where Kano reaches into Reptile and pulls out his heart, and Kano literally says, Kano wins. And I was just like, no, no more. I'm done. Oh, no. <sighs> this level's going to give me trouble. Hey, your boo-boo jelly was bussin' straight lit, fam. <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So are we going to get a picnic basket full of meth? <laughs> Imagine Gordon Ramsay saying that. Straight bussin, straight bussin. <laughs> you know, they say I'm down with the bitches in the hose. <laughs> <laughs> this is Malibu's most wanted. Oh yeah, I got that from <laughs> there. I didn't even realize it. Shoot, okay. I think I actually need to cape for this one if I'm planning on playing it that way. It's probably another P-Wing, but or a P-Balloon, but I'm not sure where it is. So, I think for the first time I actually have to go to the top secret area. Yeah, you know what's weird is that I've been, t like, I'm sure you've seen it, like, when I type, I'll type RIP. And yeah. that's not something I started doing before I joined the Sonic community. That was, like, something I picked up there, and that's now just something I do. <laughs> the, the, this community influences people in, in ways. Well, no, I think it was just because I was around younger people and they had different lingo that I just didn't have. Right. My thing was like, I never, you know how you write though? It's like some people write it T-H-O. I almost never wrote like that. I'm just like, no, I, I, I don't do that. Oh, I still don't. I type like almost everything out. And that's only because like, so, you know, text messages, how you used to do it on that, like, T9, like, pad, and you would, like, press, like, six, seven times to get a number? Yeah. So, like, there was this story about a guy who was, like, he was traveling to, like, Thailand or whatever. And, like, text costs, like, 25 cents per text. And his friend just sent him the letters K. Like, really? That's 25 cents? <laughs> so, it's, like... Now that, like, normal keyboards are a thing, it's like, there's no sense in not typing it out. 
And you don't really have to pay, like, for text message. Well, not anymore. I mean, you still used to. I remember I was doing that in, like, 2004 or six. I had, like, a track phone. Oh. Uh, 2004 to 2006? But it was like, wow. I would tell everybody, like, pretend that text messages to me cost, like, 25 cents a piece. Yeah, okay. I was never... I never had a phone around that time, so... By the time I actually got a phone... Uh, had unlimited text. Then again, I was like on a plan with the rest of my family, so it's like, yeah, I barely used it. The only reason I had the phone was so that way it was an MP3 player that I could use. Oh, I think it went the wrong way. Super Burp DX says, I know where all the rings are in S3, but almost none in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Or Sonic I, and Knuckles. I believe you can get a lot of them in Mushroom Hill, but even I don't know that stuff. You can get all the ones you need in Mushroom Hill. At least if you're playing like Sonic 3 and Knuckles like together. Because, like, I know because, like, after that, like, if I don't have them, then, like, I'm not going to be able to get them. Well, except for a flying battery. I know where, like, one or two are, but. Yeah, I, I would either yeah, find, like. Yeah, they're well hidden. I would find, like, two or three of them in flying battery. And it's like, okay, I can find them here. Or Sandopolis uh, Act 2. There's also one in Sandopolis. Sandopolis Act 1 is, like, impossible to find any. Like, if you're going, like, normal routes, you're not going to find one. Yeah, no, you have to go out of your way to, like, comb around through the whole area. Uh, there's one that's exclusive to Tails. Uh, because you need to be able to fly. Um, but for Sonic 3, I'm, I usually have them all by the end of Hydrocity. Oh yeah, Hydrocity pretty much too. It's just because it's easier to get Supersonic and then like fly through the rest of the levels and then do that again with Hypersonic. Yeah. So, like, if you mess up, like, the first couple of big rings, just, like, reset and just restart again. <laughs> Pretty much. I know, I, I tend to get that asked of me, like, when I don't go for the emeralds. Like, how come you didn't go for the emeralds for, like, without defeating a badnik? It's like, uh, I care more about the challenge than the emeralds themselves. Because you'd still be defeating a bad Nick. Well, it'd be harder if you went Super Sonic. So. Yeah. Um. So I think Sonic Three. There were moments where it's like, crap. I went. Uh, I went Super. I have to immediately get rid of this. So I have to go look for a checkpoint. It's not like you could do that in Sonic Mania and just be like, oh yeah, I was egg reverie Super Sonic. So I just flew through everything. <laughs> People would be really pissed off. Uh, the joke uh, response I would get is like, just use debug mode. It's like, not the point. <laughs> After a while, it's like, okay, I, I get it. You're, you're, it's a joke, but still. Uh, another one would be, uh, it was a Sonic CD one where it's like, just count, just don't count the last three uh, the light bulb enemies from uh, Sonic CD. Like, I'll just don't count those last three and, like, consider those, like, kind of like a mini-boss. Like, that's not how it works. They still... They still act like regular enemies. Yeah, but it's also the only enemies that have a screen lock, so... Yeah, I was really, like, just trying everything I can. It's like, okay, can I get through the door somehow? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then had people telling me, it's like... It's not possible, so you don't have to make the video. It's like, I'm still going to make the video. Well, yeah, it's free content. I don't know why I'm running this far back. Okay, that was a mistake. I was supposed to jump. That's right. The, the P switch is right there, and I can use that. Uh, do the flower seeds come out of them when you hit them? Yes, they do. Just cheat. Yeah, just cheat. That's all I gotta do. 
just don't do it and say that you did it. <laughs> I did it. Just trust me on this one. Guys, trust me, I did it and it was hard. I spent like 30 hours. <laughs> oh, 30 hours on a challenge. Would and I did nothing but play the challenge. I didn't even eat or sleep or do anything. That was... <laughs> I know there's a YouTuber, a Dry Bread, who does like the Pokemon challenges and it's like so many hours of them just going through them. I think it's like... Some of them are about like 30 hours, some of them are about 80 hours or something like that, because he has to overtrain his Pokemon. It's like, there's no way I'd be able to do that. I love Pokemon, but I would... Uh, yeah, but he could do it on an emulator with like fast forward though, so I don't think it would be too bad. He doesn't do that. At least to my knowledge, he doesn't. I'm just like, you are... I don't know, that's how I would do it, and then like... Transfer my save game over. <laughs> Well, I have a feeling like that you it's... You put it on a cartridge and just, like, I don't know. Do it judging from the quality of his footage, I'm assuming they're, it's all emulated. But... I think it's just one of those things, just do it legit. Or as legit as you can. And besides, he doesn't really have to be the one playing. He could probably pay somebody else. And then they record all the footage and like their their notes, and then he all he has to do is present it. Yeah, but then you just become the angry video game nerd. Ooh, sorry. I don't know. They do that with like who does that all the time? Like Linus Tech Tips. Obviously, he doesn't like do stuff all week. True. He has like editors and like other stuff writing up everything. I, I think there's a difference if it's like a. I don't know. I, I guess that would work for a challenge, but then, you know, you kind of lose the whole they did the challenge challenge or something. I think more people would be ang angry at the fact that he would outsource the whole thing to someone else. Uh, some people believe that the Angry Video Game Nerd series is completely done by other people. And all James Rolfe has to do is just read a script. Well, the way that Mike Matei talks, yeah, probably. <laughs> Remember when he was just like, there shouldn't be an easy mode or something. He said some really dumb thing. Oh, the save state one. Right, that one. Right. Although I'm, I feel like I might have to be careful with what I say about AVGN. Just because screen wave, but then it's like, are they ever going to check my streams? Probably not. They're probably just taking your money at this point. Just saying, they don't care. And it's like, oh, enjoy this. Like, oh, well, thank you for the, uh, the perks, you know, every now and then getting a halfway decent uh, free game. <laughs> then again, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to say stuff like that. Whatever. Who cares? Really, what I should probably do is, I mean, all the Sonic social media people are on Twitter. Most of them, anyway. Like, if I really need a review copy, I could probably just email them or send them a DM and be like very polite lightly, hey, you know, it'd be awesome to get a review code if you can help me out somehow. But it's like, why? I did something like that for Team Sonic Racing. Uh, and I actually did get it, um, but when I think Sonic Forces was about to come out, I probably should have done it then, but I didn't think it was going to be possible because I think at that time I I was barely over a thousand subs. I don't know. It's really weird with uh, asking for review codes. I've only ever done it once for like for a Sonic related thing. That's weird. So I probably would have had more subs than you at that point. Like more than Sonic likely. Came out. More than likely. Uh, I didn't reach about 2000 subs until December of 2017. I don't know historically what that was, but I know I had like maybe like 500 even before I started. Just because like I had like a legacy channel that I had put stuff on before. Oh, okay. I had an older channel that I made content for, but then it became apparent that that kind of content was something I just wasn't interested in. It was just like game reviews similar to like well, I can't really say similar to like some call me Johnny and stuff like that because 
feel like that's an insult to their videos. Mine were terrible. Welcome to Mega Frank Mega Boxing Reviews. <laughs> I should have said wrestling, but I, I said boxing for some reason. Oh no, a friend of uh, uh, a friend of mine has uh, enlightened me on why I should not make wrestling content on the internet because apparently some wrestling fans are extremely toxic. Oh yeah, for sure, and like I'm sure most of them are like kids in middle school. Or the ones that will just repeatedly say, well, the Attitude Era was the best era. And it's like, are you sure about that? I mean, it was it was fine for, like, the big uh, the big stuff that was going on. But not all of it was great. The Attitude Era was the best era. And then uses a non-Attitude Era meme. Are you sure about that? <laughs> it's like, well, Austin and McMahon. It's like, yeah, but... Got the whole thing with Val Venus and... You know, there's a lot that you can fall back on. Uh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't get into, into certain topics from that era. Or... I, don't know. I remember watching the one with, I think it was Batista and I want to say John Cena. And then he climbed like on top of the uh, cage. That... And like one jumped off. Which I'm sure happened like thousands of times, actually. It actually didn't happen as often as you think. I think that was Undertaker. That, like, and... It was probably like a pay-per-view event, yeah. It was like Undertaker and McFoley, like one of the most reused pieces of media from that entire from that entire company. With the uh, Hell in a Cell. Yeah, it probably was that one. That's probably what actually I'm remembering. But I was watching in like that era. I watched a lot more during, I guess they call it the Ruthless Aggression Era. That's because, I like... Know. Wrestling I is just comic books, basically. And it was like, then it was like, I wasn't like... I wasn't a young child, so... I was finally understanding these stories, and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, what's that? Two, two men are having a ladder match for the custody of a child? Okay, that's... out there. Yeah, even then when I was, like, watching stuff because, like, I could download, like, the SummerSlam, like, after it was out, and that's how I would watch it, I would just go through and just, like, skip all of the BS and just go straight to the matches. Yeah, and it would turn, like, it would turn in, like, a three-hour event into, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> Honestly, the new episodes of ABGN don't hit like the older ones. They've been, they feel flanderized. I believe they're worked on by like all, a lot of people from Screenwave or a few, a select few people of Screenwave. So if I did this right, then I should have Star 96. The only way for me to do that is to hit the reset switch. <laughs> well, I think you have it because that changed, didn't it? Oh no, that just means that I went past, uh, that just means I went past uh, the star in, in in the special world. There we go. Got another star 96. But it just means I dropped down to five lives instead of having 99. Well, if that's easy, just don't die. <laughs> it won't be that hard. Because I, I only really have one level to do. To do. Uh, I can either do uh, the... I can... <laughs> God, I hate the way that was going to be worded. So, Bowser's Castle has a front door and a back door. <laughs> and that's what they're labeled as. So I can either go through the front door or through the back... I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the way it's worded. The front and the back entrance. Like... Uh, the difference is that the back entrance is just the last room before you fight Bowser. And the front door has, like, you can pick uh, room between rooms 1 and 4 and it gives you a certain challenge. And then you can go with uh, between 5 and 8 and it'll give you another one. So I'm going to go through ones that I've never gone, that I don't go through very much, so... 
Room two. Did I already get hit early on? That's okay. I'm gonna stay in the background so that way I don't get hit by the fireballs because it'll make things easier. And then between five through seven, I'll go, I'll probably go through seven. I think seven was one of the harder ones. Never mind. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm wrong about that. It could be like three and eight or something. Mario 64, the 100 lives and sparkling jump is only available once, so when you reset it, they're both gone forever on that file. I didn't even know that. Uh, so when you die, what's something that they would, what you would like to have on your, like, funeral announcement? Like, where it says, like, Frank, YouTuber, or Sonic Tuber, right? <laughs> it's what's probably one thing be you would like to have? Oh, man. Uh. Like, local Pokemon breeder? I'd probably just put... I'd probably just leave it up to, like, some out-of-context thing that I said. So when somebody walks by, if somebody sees it, it's just like, what? Frank, YouTuber, <laughs> professional content creator. Or it would be, like, YouTuber, influencer. And then, it, like, professional that's... crackpot. <laughs> I could probably find something in, in one of the streams that I've... Um, that I've done that I've said something really weird. I'm sure there's something on <laughs> that's been officially streamed or recorded that I've said. They did that with one guy recently, and it was the guy from The Whitest Kids You Know. Like, he was like, oh, when I die, like, call me, have him call me, like, a professional sex pot or something. <laughs> And that was in his, all of his, like, obituaries. I would probably just say hydrosity is just one word. I would still piss off Sonic fans in, in the afterlife. Professional hydrosity historian. And then put that on your tombstone. <laughs> Like, I would need it to be something where I can mess with people, so it, even if they saw it to, like, however much later in the future, like, I disagree with that. So Peach is in this clown car this entire time. Yep. And surprised she's not vomiting or anything. She flipped over a couple times. Well, I think it's interesting that there's like enough room for Bowser and then Peach would have to be like under his butt or something. Probably. <laughs> I know there's a really cool uh, widescreen hack for this that um, that makes the Bowser fight a little bit harder because you can actually get pushed off the edge. Oh yeah, that would suck. I saw that and I was like, you know what? I'm fine with that. That that boss fight could be a little bit harder and that's just enough to do it. Oh god. Okay. Mario, our princess is in another castle. <laughs> they did that in Mario 3. <laughs> Where she's the one telling him that. 
Mario's adventure is over. Mario, Princess Peach, and Yoshi and his friends now have to pay taxes. Yoshi mysteriously disappears. <laughs> Man, can you imagine how hyped the nine-year-old kid who beat this must have been? I, I would say that was that would be me, but there's one ending that beats this. And that is the one in Super Mario RPG. When they have the whole the full parade. Which that is a game I need to stream at one point. You know nope. what really sucks? I had a copy of Kirby All Stars for the Super Nintendo. And I have no idea whatever happened to it. Because, like, that game alone is, like, at least 50 bucks now. That sounds about right. It's a first-party uh, Nintendo game on the Super Nintendo. Well, and it's, like, the best Kirby game. I haven't played enough Kirby games. so, But, yeah, it's, like, I don't know, it's crazy. That's why something like uh, Switch Online or uh, the Super Nintendo Classic, when that was around, is a, was a very valuable thing. I mean, yeah, sure, it's the novelty, but it's also the convenience of having it. Anybody could just download um, ROMs and put them on a system, but I, I think that's why I bought the uh, Super Nintendo Classic. It was just like the novelty of having it, which is actually what I'm playing it off of. So that was interesting. Apparently, during Stealth's stream, someone was pretending to be a game dev that wasn't. Oh, no. And they, like, they didn't even bother changing their, like, YouTube name to match or anything. <laughs> they were just saying, oh, yeah, I'm this person, and that person was in the chat. <laughs> uh, what was Stealth playing? I don't know. I'm just going by what I saw on YouTube. I wasn't watching. Oh, okay. I remember somebody made an, a, a quick YouTube account out of spite for me, trying to impersonate me. They didn't even have the image or anything. Oh no, they had the image, but it was like something, it was supposed to be some kind of insult towards me. I saw that and I got a good laugh out of it. Because <laughs> I, I think I pissed them off earlier in the stream because I banned them or something. <laughs> something we don't get on Twitch, because, thankfully. It's like, all the bans and, uh... And like timeouts and stuff that usually happens on YouTube. Cinnamon Mina says, You streaming this late? Hi, Cinnamon. Wow, also hi. Yeah, um, I was in the mood to just play something on stream, but I didn't know what I wanted to play, and I figured the uh, Nintendo was. had that post about the Super Nintendo's uh, the 30th anniversary of its release, and it's like, well, I could play something off that, and I went back to Super Mario World. It's a game that I've played a lot at this point. Diagonal Mario? What's that? Oh, that's Play what's... Diagonal Mario? Oh, Lil Sparky and Hothead. Those were the names of the, of the little fireball enemies. It kind of sucks that they never did this with Sonic, considering that they all have names. It would have been great, so I don't have to have well, people... If you could do that, like, on the 3DS version. But, like, oh. it would be nice if they actually had, like, an in-game cutscene where they show you all the enemies. That would be cool. It's a funny ROM hack. Uh, I might play ROM hacks at another time. It's actually pretty late for me right now. It's, like, almost 11. <laughs> 3DS version of Sonic 1 or Sonic 2. Okay, then I have not beaten those games. I ha I haven't beaten those ones, so I've never seen it. Like I I own um I own Sonic 1 on the Sega 3D collection that they have on 3DS and then Sonic 2 I have a digital version. 
it was supposed to be for a video like comparing them to the switch versions but when i got into it it's like there's nothing too different about these well what i mean is that it has like a custom ending that shows like the characters or the enemies and like the names and they have like little animations and stuff i'm pretty sure that's not any version you're probably right yeah actually there's that's because I haven't seen it in any other version of the game that I own. The Nintendo 3DS version is so different. Uh, at least the 3D Classic version. I don't remember them being too different. Except for the fact that, you know, there was a 3D screen. So they had, like, the background blurred a little bit for for the 3D effect. Um, like, all the other modes that they have in that version, uh, they carried over to the Switch version. With the exception of... With the exception of the drop dash. Right. So yeah, um, that was Super Mario World in its entirety. Oh yeah, here it is. Like, it's oh. not really fancy, but it is kind of cool that they did it. Oh, that's cool. That's actually a really nice touch to it. I threw it in chat in case you guys want to check that out. <laughs> it even has tails on there. Oh, this is for Sonic 2. Okay, okay. That's I think they did one for Sonic 1 as well. I just couldn't find it as easy. I mean, I could just play it for 40 minutes and beat the game and see what happens. So if only they would release that Sega Origins or that Sonic Origins collection or whatever. Yeah, I feel like I know we're going to be waiting about another year. I know I said I must have said that damn idea like 20 fucking times. <laughs> I'm like, sure it... just oh. just report all of Christian Whitehead stuff and then just get a team to work on Sonic 3 using all the mania assets. Like, as much as possible, just reuse it all. And you can get something out quick. And that's exactly what's happening. Well, It I, seems like that's what's happening. I don't know. We don't have any info on Sonic 3. I Although guess... Katie says it's going to be in widescreen, so I would hope so. And who knows if uh, the versions of Sonic 1, 2, and CD are going to be exactly the same. There might be something different with it, or... They might probably be... will, because, like... I mean, they're on sale for mobile right now anyway, so. It's not like they've been pulled and it's like they're impossible to get. True. They split the background layer into four parts. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah, M2 does like amazing work with uh, emulation and ports of uh, of older games. Like, a lot of people will... I, I've seen comments where people will talk about Sonic uh, 1 and 2 on the Switch, saying that it's not a very good port or something. And I made the mistake of doing that because there was a sound issue that I was having with my console that I never I never addressed, but I really should have. Um, they're really not good ports. <laughs> they're not... It's just because of the stuff that they jammed in there. Like, the ports aren't too bad. Like, they're very... Like they're... the drop dash, right? Like, obviously, that's going... That would need some work. Yeah, it would. That's like, like... that wasn't correct at all. Yeah, that was... That would be the one thing that I am not the biggest fan of, but I didn't really care about the spin dash in Sonic 1 anyways. 
like even when other game other versions of it started bringing it in it's like hey, i don't really care about this i don't use it but um in terms of like how much content you get into it sonic one not so much but with sonic 2 it's not a bad deal when you think about it you get sonic 2 and you get knuckles in sonic 2. with sonic 1 you get i guess two different versions of sonic 1 uh one with and without the spike glitch uh and also the mega play version of sonic 1 which is like an arcade version of it that cuts out a lot of the slower zones or the slower levels in the game It's one of those, like, you kind of have to be, like, a bigger fan of those games to actually seek out uh, the Sega Ages version. But, I mean, obviously, people are going to prefer, some are going to prefer the mobile remaster, the mobile remasters, which, for Sonic 2, it's pretty good. It's much better than the original game. For Sonic 1, I don't I just think it's insane that Sega kept re-releasing Sonic 1 and 2, and then, like, paid M2 a bunch of money to, like, re-make this port. When they have Christian Whitehead's version, which they have the source for, it's made to be ported to different things. Right. Why not just use that? I will say this. The Christian Whitehead version of Sonic 1 ruins the special stages. It makes them much more difficult than they need to be. And it's only because the rotation's a lot smoother in with those special stages. But it's it also comes it's also a little bit faster. With Sonic 1, because it was only rotating, like, I don't know, a few frames per second or something, it was, or whatever, uh, it was a little easier to manage. Anyway, it's getting late. I'm going to get going. But um, right. thank you for having me on stream. That was Hopefully great. we talk soon. Absolutely. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. And then on my end, uh, that's gonna do. That's just that's gonna just about do it for today. Um, I'll, I usually don't stream this late, so next time I stream again, it's probably gonna be a bit. Or it's gonna be earlier in the day. Um, <laughs> I kind of let this. I kind of just kept streaming, so it was kind of crazy. Uh, so I. I'm going to have to do all of my Sage content recording tomorrow and try to, like, quickly put together two, uh, put up two of the uploads, so I'll be doing that. And then on Thursday, um, if I'm able to stream early enough, probably continue some Skyward Sword HD. And then on Saturday will be, uh, it'll be myself, and then I'll have Garla64 joining me for Mario 64 Plus, uh, the exact build that's a part of Sage this year, um... And that's going to be the only real Sage-related stream I'll be doing. It's not a part of the official Sage stream, so there, I'm not doing any of that. Uh, I'm only really just doing the uploads, but the Mario 64 stuff was interesting enough to where I would want to play it on, like, I want to check, try, just mess around with it on stream. And uh, Garlic 64 said, yeah, you know, just let me know when you do that. And so we kind of for sure have it for Saturday. Though, plans can always change, but I'll be sure to let you all know if that ever happens. Um, with that said, that's going to do it for today's stream. Yeah, it seems like EX with more options. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole point of playing it is just play it, mess around with it, and see what we can do with it. Or m more, it's just see what I can do with it since I'll be the one playing. But yeah, um, like I said, with that said, that's going to do it for, uh, for this stream. Um... I'm going to have to scramble to, like, do a few Sage videos so that way I can at least upload two of them tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be doing Sage coverage all the way until Friday, and then either this weekend or the beginning of next week, uh, I will be uploading without defeating a bad Nick. It's going to go live, so it just means i got to work on it this week. Anyways, thank you all so much for coming by. Hope you all have a wonderful and safe day, and I will see you for the next stream. Or if not, then I'll see you for the... YouTube content. Until then, take care.